I'm what? gonna do, do, do properly now. I'm not gonna be slovenly. I'm sitting up straight, you see. Yep. And it's gonna be a proper DJing, because I think- Coming up soon, some great tracks, including a new one from Abs and an old one from Snow. <laughs> Informer. <laughs> you know me, that if it's me a boom, a licky boom boom down. I'm joking, of course. We've got some fantastic tracks, Good some stuff, great yeah. chat, and we've got Carl That's with me, great Steve. Chat. Steve. I'm Ricky Gervais on XFM 104.9. There he is indeed, with him, Steve Merchant. And, uh, Carl Pilkinson, of course. Say hello, Carl. Alright. Yeah, nice. And, uh, you- you say you read- The beginning of a radio show is very much your wares, your shop window, laying out your stall. I don't think you could choose a better track than The Only Ones, Another Girl on the Planet. I'd love to hear it. Another planet. One of my favourite intros, that. Amazing. Oh, that was dangerous, because I once heard on Capital Radio, um, this has got to be the greatest rock intro of all time. And they played Money for Nothing by Dire Straits. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I can just imagine them putting their head down. I remember a friend of mine at, uh, when I was at school, he, he just bought a car, and he took me outside to show off the stereo system, Money for Nothing. Just to, just <laughs> really? to, he just played that, I've never heard the song before. Just played that for its entire four or five minute duration. It is a to good show song the, for- uh, the sound system. Yeah, it's a good song for showing off intros <laughs> and sound <laughs> yeah, systems. exactly. Yeah. yeah. You said you were driving along earlier, you saw someone, uh- Are you- are you- uh, yeah, pla- yeah, it was a- one of those zooped up sort of, um, uh, sporty saloons. Nice. You know, the big, like a Mondale or something, those big- and, uh, it was blaring out. And the bloke in it was sort of like, I could tell he was twenty four, but already going bald. <laughs> Yeah. For, from, like, obviously his estate agency job, not to <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he's made a bit of money and he's got- and the stereo was ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, so loud and it was going through Covent Garden. He was playing Snow in Forma. <laughs> oh! I just, do people remember Informer by Snow? It was a big tune in my I don't, I don't know. It's, it's great. Yeah, yeah I, I always enjoy can it. Can I bring that in next week? Can we play no. Snow next week? Well, you can play a tiny little bit tiny of Tiny little bit of Snow. Yeah. Do you remember the Snow car? Yeah, yeah, you love it. Yeah, big tune. Yeah. Yeah. Loved it. Oh, yeah. did you? Big tune from yeah. the 90s. Happy song, isn't it? You were yeah. saying that you've turned over a new leaf. Yeah. Yeah. Is that in all aspects of your life or is that just in your broadcasting career? Because uh, the reason I bring that up is because do you want to describe what you were eating just now when we came in? Because well, you're a 40 you're a 40 year old man, you've got a little bit of weight, so presumably yeah. you're watching what you eat. Well, no, but it sounded exotic. I went can into I, a cafe and, and I didn't I, they didn't have a cheese sandwich. Right. And uh, can I describe what it looked like to me? <laughs> right? It looked to me like a big slab of cheese. You've just got them to just <laughs> cut off a big block of cheese, like the size of a CD case. <laughs> Yeah. One of those double albums, <laughs> right, of cheese, right? And just lightly melt that for me so yeah. it drips over my hand and it yeah. gets really greasy in the bag. But yeah. just lay some strips of bacon on the top. Yeah, but listen, you've embarrassed yourself. Is that yourself. what it was? No, it's a croque monsieur, so it's French. It's a what? A croque monsieur. A croque monsieur. Yeah, and so I got- I, I thought, Ooh. I've never heard of a croque you're monsieur. You're having a- see, you've embarrassed yourself. Is that how it's pronounced, or is yeah. it croque monsieur? Oh! <laughs> hey? <laughs> hey? I'm you not... didn't expect me to be bringing out the French. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> Tu aimes la musique pop? Oui, je t'aime la musique pop. La plume de ma tante. Où est le syndicat d'initiative? That means my aunt's pen. So what was it then? A crop? It was a crop. Yeah, and it, and it was just too greasy. It yeah. was just too, and it was all wobbly. I, 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 well, I like toast. I like it to be crisp. Sure. It's the thing with like, what? Uh, this is rubbish. Play Coldplay. Out the pan. Yeah. Coldplay. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah, it's not bad, yeah. yeah not bad. Nice, not, nice little track. Yeah. Well, Steve, um, we've been away now for what, 12, 13, 14 weeks? Is that really? Yeah. Why? Wow. I've been looking forward to coming back. It's great, it's great to be back. <laughs> yep. Yep. And, uh, yeah, we've had uh, some 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 laughs, some tears in the, in the interim. I imagine. <laughs> yeah, uh, we've had a few ups and downs. Obviously, been working on uh, the TV show, The Office, BAFTA winning, <laughs> uh, coming soon, BBC Two. <laughs> but uh, uh, 30, Rick, I just, mean, I just need to mention something quickly to you. Um, Go on. When did I last see you? I saw you yesterday, didn't I? Yeah. Because um, we went up to Edinburgh yesterday. We were we were very nicely uh, invited to go and talk at the uh, Edinburgh International Television Festival. It was quite yeah. a big deal. We went up there and we were interviewed. And uh, Ricky chose to go on the train because it takes like four hours, four and a half hours or something on the train. Yeah. But it's quite leisurely. It's quite sort yeah. of gentle thing to do. Yeah. I opted to go for the plane option yeah. and fly up there. More modern. Exactly. And uh, and they, they bankrolled that. They paid for it all and yeah. uh, that was all not very nice. And, and as I recall, when I last saw you, uh, we got a cab, didn't we? And, and you asked if you could get the cab to drop you off at the train station. Yeah. And then it took me on to the airport. Yeah. Um, did I- now that was- that was before- I, the last time I saw you was before I got to the airport and missed my flight, wasn't it? Because really? I because I had to drop you off That's in the centre of town. Yeah, no, that that was so that was just before I had to pay one hundred and sixty five pounds to upgrade to another How ticket. How did you not tell me that in the last hour? One hundred and sixty five pounds, Ricky. 
I had to pay because we dropped you off at the train station. So, I mean, do you want to go halves on that, or what do you want to- how do you want to deal with that? How do you want to sort that whole- that whole mess out? Why were you late? Why, why was I late? Because yeah. we dropped you off in the centre of Edinburgh, and yeah, do you know how hard it is to get out of Edinburgh in rush hour traffic? But it was only- it was only three minutes away, so you'd no, have missed it anyway. No, because if we'd gone the other direction, it would've been twenty minutes. It took me like an hour to get to the tr to the airport. And I got there, and the plane had already left, <laughs> and the cabbie was just laughing. He was saying, we're never gonna make it. He goes, you were a religious man, you better start praying. I thought he was being facetious. He was absolutely right. A hundred and sixty-five pounds. But hold on, why didn't he tell you that when he- when- when he picked up a well, quarter past four? It makes you wonder. So obviously li I'm a little bit annoyed. Cause you know I'm not a man who likes to sort of spend unnecessarily. But wait, but wait, this is not my fault. Cause you were there when we made that decision. I didn't impose this on you, we both decided that might be- it's both our fault. I mean it's no- no one's fault. It's both our fault. Is that fair? That's all I wanted to hear. It's both our fault, therefore it's both our financial obligation. No! £165, just split that in half. <laughs> write a check, Rick. Write a check. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I trust you. Yeah. You know. Um, phone in. Uh, I think everyone. This. This You're is. You're clearly obvious. responsible. No, of course I'm not. If you if you share a cab and then one person's lucky enough to not be late and one person is unlucky enough and that's what it is. Bad luck. I don't think you share the obligation. The but phone, it's, just, a mor it's a moral dilemma. This isn't it. But it's more than that, though, isn't Go it? On, because what? let's be honest. What? Um, even if you had known that it, I was gonna get there late. You'd have wanted me to hang around just so you weren't left around waiting for a train on no, the No, cause I got Cause there. you get bored sitting no, there, cause you. I got so there. you'd have wanted me to at least got in that car I got there you. way too early. I right. actually got there about- I was there about thirty minutes. Oh, so early. you made it fine then. That was well, that exactly. Was so I mean, I did. I I, I sacrificed <laughs> me hanging around for half an hour so you could get it at quarter past four. And the other thing is this: you were gonna get it at quarter past four anyway. Yeah, but, but I would- if I'd gone the other direction and not dropped you off in the centre, I would have been there in well, time. Well, would we? Would we? Well, Is yes. that true? Well, only God knows. Well, and the cabbie. <laughs> 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 what I mentioned it to. <laughs> so, uh, I'll tell you what will cheer you up. I'll tell you what's better than 80 quid. I'll tell you what's better than- shall I? <laughs> Go on. Uh, music. What, are you paying the whole 165? <laughs> Listen, look, I've brought in a little track here, um, right. Bruce Springsteen off the Tunnel Love album, and uh, I know you're a Springsteen fan. I'm a Springsteen we're, we're, fan. We should just qualify this, because a lot of people who listen to XFM are obviously a bit edgy about Springsteen. They yeah. just think he's this old, kind of ludicrous 80s rocker, the bandana, you know, the, the fly in the flag, which he no, never that, really was. No, that was Bon Jovi. Exactly. Don't, don't confuse Bon Jovi. Them. But seriously, no, do you know what I mean? He did write some great music in the 70s, yeah. and he just got a little bit kind of pompous in the 80s, but he still turned out uh, some amazing tunes. One of which I imagine is this one, Rick. This one's called Brilliant Disguise. I'm not... Bit of Springsteen there, Brilliant Disguise on XFM 104.9. I think that's that soothed you a little bit. That's uh, that's not really taking the blood off. I, I just remember something as well. Eighty quid, Rick. Eighty quid. You know what? Um, we finished the talk at about sort of three, and we had a couple of hours to kill before we got the uh, about that half two, wasn't it? We had a couple of hours before we got the the taxi, and uh, and we were eating in this cafe, and uh, and Steve said, "How long's your train journey?" I said, oh, four and a half hours." He went, "So you, what was I get?" I said, oh, "I'm getting about 10. He went, "Half six, me." Uh, and he's quite smug, and I went, yeah, I said, it is it's quite a long time, I just started to sort of relax now. Uh, he went, yeah, I said, but, he said, I think I've come off better here, cos usually you've organised all this stuff. He said, but I think you've chosen wrong here. I think, oh, I said, I think you're right. <laughs> Yeah. You? Don't you think those words were <laughs> coming back to haunt me as I was <laughs> handing over 165 <laughs> notes. I was, all I was thinking was, and Ricky's I was gonna be loving in it. first class, drinking, uh, John Smith's, yeah. and listening to Mercedes Walkman. Yeah, but I handed over my initial card. <laughs> she said 165 quid then. I went, fine. I handed over a card. Uh, yeah. it was a switch card. She said, we don't take switch. Don't they? I was thinking, how, what am I gonna do then? I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know where I'm gonna get the money from. What did you do in the end then? Well, Go luckily the I had another card. Oh, right. And, um, and she managed to accept that one. But I, I don't know what I'd have done there. I don't genuinely you know what You didn't tell me you had another card. <laughs> yeah, I got two cards. Have you? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. sure, sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, oh, that um, is depressing. I was so depressed because I just kept thinking about what I'd said to you. <laughs> <laughs> I've won this time. Because normally I'm always like legging it for tubes or I'm just, do you know, where I get stuck in the rain or and something. I've I just organized never organized to drive or something. Travel. Because when you get me, I said, well, it's up to you. It's up to you. You know what I mean? Every man for themselves. But this time it was four and a half hours and I was just in that 40 minutes on the tr on the plane, there'd have been no problem. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so livid. Do you know, I got off the- cause I was not very well either, I'm a bit ill at the moment. I got off the, the plane, and I thought, well, I could get a cab from the airport all the way back home, but you know, I've already been stung for 165 quid, got the tube, took me forever. Really? I'm not gonna lie to you, it took me forever. 
Oh, so I got, I got in probably later than you did. <laughs> <laughs> Around the 11 o'clock mark. You didn't really? No, I wasn't quite as bad oh. as that. But I was so depressed. I'm really depressed, Rick. So I was I saying know. 50 quid is well, like money. Right I mean, Steve does not like to waste money. And I, I mean, by that, I mean. I mean. I don't like to spend money. No. Um. We had to, he had to go out and get our shirt for a photo shoot. Not quite an important photo shoot for, I think, the, the Times. Right? Went out, he was buying a shirt, buying a shirt, went out, planned it, went short. Came back, four ninety, fourteen ninety nine from Henny's. Henny's, fourteen ninety nine. He knew where he was aiming. He aimed straight for Henny's. He knew, he knew where he can get a bargain. Uh, this is a man. But I, it seems to me that at that kind of price, you can throw them away. Av. You don't even need to wash them, really. You can throw them away using, like, Kleenex. Have you ever thrown one away? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Just scrape off the stains and keep on wearing it. <laughs> Remember that time when we went to the casino for my birthday, and I was, like, 100 quid down, and some people were 100 quid up, and 100 quid down. Uh, he, after the three hours we were there, was down 20 pounds, genuinely depressed. I was almost crying. Yeah. Because I don't- well, it's because it's a- it's a mugs game gambling. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. <laughs> was that where we- because I went there, it was, uh, when it was one time we went there, it was, uh, our agent's Oh, birthday. that was another time we went yeah. there, right? And he was up. And he'd, he'd got a, uh, got a win, he was 30 quid up. And so I said, it's your round then. <laughs> and the round was more than 30 quid. And he couldn't believe it. And he sat down and he went, I can't believe it. He said, and I bought him a present, so I was already down. Yeah. <laughs> I was. I turned out I was already down because I bought our agent a gift. <laughs> he didn't, I didn't see him buy it. And you know that thing where you're buying a round of drinks for people you don't even know? So it's like, what's the story there? Why am I suddenly bankrolling you drinks? It's like, I don't know you people. I'm not going to get any kind of, I'm not going to see you again to sort of reap the benefits at a later point. Because he came in I'm with not, his three Most of you are married chipped. or engaged, so I'm not even going to pull from it. It, it was, was a waste of time. It was, it was like, just it, pure generosity. It was something like from Swingers, because he came into the cocktail bar holding three chips up worth ten pounds each yeah. and went, hello, <laughs> like that. Yeah, I was <laughs> yeah. thirty pounds up. That's a lot of money, Rick. Uh, you know, Carl, you, yeah. you know that. Thirty quid. You don't want to sniff at that. Oh, what, what, what songs should we play? Let's, we've got lots of songs in. So I'll... Bit of, uh, bit of Incubus. Oh. Just right? to make me more depressed. Oh. Is that right? Oh, I thought it was a bit slow. I know, but I'm a fan of it. I like slow songs, but that's really doing for me. I've always been a fan of it, even from, you know, early days. I thought his first song was really great and much maligned. People didn't like it, because they were expecting, like, you know... The verve. Yeah. Yeah. Urban hymns and all that. Yeah, yeah. But that's great. On XFM 104.9. Who are you? Ricky Gervais, who are you? Steve Merchant. Who's that little round-headed fellow over there? Oh, he is Carl Pilkington. Carl, we haven't had a lot of Carl today. He's a bit tired, aren't you? Just a little bit. Just what happened? Bit you you came back from Edinburgh today as well, didn't you, on the plane? This morning. Yeah. Got an early, an early flight. Yeah. Um, it's just annoying me because there's, there was like people on the plane fighting over, um, where they wanted to sit. Uh, Surely they've got designated seats. Well, they have, but that wasn't good enough for them. They wanted like, they wanted to sit next to the friends and that, and it's like, well, you can't because you didn't check in together, so that's, that's the way it is. Yeah, done. But the thing is, it's from Edinburgh, 40 minutes. Yeah. And I just don't understand this sort of... You can stand for that long, can't you? Well, wh why do you have to sit next to the person anyway, to be honest? I mean, fair enough, if you're going on a long flight, someone to talk to, but for 40 minutes, it really doesn't matter. I never want anyone to talk to. I, d I don't want anyone sitting next to me to talk to me. Why? Well, what are they there for? What? I, I don't mean people I go with. I mean, if I'm travelling alone and I sit next to someone, I don't want them to talk to me. Yeah, but... I don't really know. If I was travelling with you, I'd really not want you to talk to me. <laughs> not if you're gonna talk like this. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, this is this- Carl, oh, you sound like you're suicidal, mate. It was just a couple of people arguing. It's over, man. Yeah. The plane journey's finished. He's, Why he's, is it still stewing he's, you he's, up? He's, he paid 160 quid and he's not winning. He doesn't care. He's, 165 he's, quid. Let's get it right. <laughs> if we're gonna bring it up, <laughs> we're gonna mention it. <laughs> and it's like, what for ducks back to him? Like, he's, he just, <laughs> he goes, it, mate, he said, he said to me, Rick, it's only money, is, and money is just something you have in case you don't die tomorrow. He's got a great attitude towards money, Steve. It's like, easy come, easy go. So just take a leaf out of Steve the I'm not spending that much merchant, and you'll have a happier life. Sorry, I just need to defend myself for a minute. There what? are certain instances in life where, you see, you know you're giving me an attitude like that I'm tight. It's not tight. No, it's no, the, no, 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 shut no, up. No, Let no, me defend no, myself. No, it's not, not that I'm tight with money, it's that I want to get value for money at all times. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, I, you probably got a lot of cash given to you, maybe it's pocket money when you were a kid. I Every didn't. penny I've ever had is be money I've earned. Yeah. So frankly, yeah. I'm gonna spend it wisely. Like for instance, you might be, say you're in a party or so you're at a party, maybe out in a bar with some, someone's birthday, you get to 
talking to a girl, right? Maybe you buy her some drinks, right? You're chatting to her, mm. and then you're chatting away for two hours, and then at the end of the evening, she says, "Oh, da 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 da, da I got to go and meet my boyfriend now." Right? She's wasted my money and my time there. Yeah. That's two hours wasted and money wasted, right? Now she should have told me straight away that she had a boyfriend, and I wouldn't have bothered with right. her. I'd have moved Ma on. I'd have what, what, what it's if like she that thought sort she was just having a chat kind with of another human being, though, Rick, where you, I'm being deliberately <laughs> deceived, <laughs> so people can extract money from me or interesting <laughs> conversation. Yeah. She knew what I was after. It was yeah. obvious: the drooling yeah. mouth, you yeah. know, the, the beady eyes. And, 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 and yet she was leading me on. And she was a prostitute. And think how he felt about that. I mean, what no, a slap in the face. No, let's not try and cheapen it with that kind of cheap sexual innuendo, right? She, she occasionally slept with me for, for, <laughs> for money. It, it wasn't for money, it was for meals. Yeah. yeah. No, but the point was, no, do you know what I mean? It's just that sort of attitude generally in my life. It's like, don't waste my time, you know? Don't waste my time or my money. You're like, life is, sh the clock is ticking as far as yeah. I'm concerned. And, you know, and so just, if, if, if you've got a boyfriend and I come up and I'm chatting you up, just let me know and I'll or move on. I won't bother you. Or yes, please. This, I'm glad you mentioned that because I feel we should, they should definitely introduce some kind of you see, system. the problem is that women without boyfriends will be wearing those badges now and you won't be able to, you know what I mean, you won't be able to say, have you really got a boyfriend? <laughs> no, I just think there should be some kind of, sort of, this sort of, there should be an etiquette, there should be an understanding. Yeah. You know, because they know, yeah. I, they can see what I'm after, it's obvious. <laughs> is it obvious, yes, is it? Yes, I make you're it not, very clear. You're not a subtle man. No, I just come over and pant. Do you still, do you still try and attract their attention by throwing small rocks at them? Yeah. As they walk down the, yeah, does that, has that yeah. ever worked? Occasionally. Is it really? You know, the desperate ones or homeless ones. Oh, the homeless but ones. He once, right, he said to me, he came in to, uh, uh work and he said, uh, I gave a homeless girl uh, a pound, right? Because I fancied her. He said, is that wrong? Is that really bad of I me? don't think it is, you see. <laughs> I don't think it is because it seems to me if she, she was an attractive homeless girl and she deserves some of my money. <laughs> I just imagine mind. him slowing down. I imagine him like going past loads of tramps going, get out of it, get a job. And she goes, you go, ah, <laughs> hello. But I have to say, I did for a moment just pause and think to myself whether I could kind of scoop her up in my arms, take her back to my place and kind of turn her life around like my fair lady. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Good, yeah. Kind of teach her to speak properly and dress her up in smart clothes and take her out into sort of society. Yeah. I think that's where your first mistake was. You said, listen, love, I'm up for it if I can hose you down. <laughs> that was where you went wrong. <laughs> Smiths, Cemetery Gates, great, wasn't it? Always cracking. Off Queen is Dead, voted best album of all time, I think, in an enemy poll. I don't think it is their Stream best album. Stream here we come. I agree. By I, far I, the best. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Cracking. Anyway, Carl, yeah, so people are arguing on the flight. How, how did you enjoy Edinburgh, by the way, anyway? Because I saw you up there briefly for, with you and, um, Nick Frost, your new mates, Nick Frost and Simon Pegg. You know, uh, he prefers them to us now. I know, apparently, I could tell that from just talking to him. It, really. it was just, it was the way he was sort of looking at them, everything like, he was just smiling at Nick Frost. He's, this his new best chum. You love right. Nick Frost, don't Would you? Would you have preferred it, right, right <laughs> if I went to Edinburgh and, and had to sit with some people that I really didn't like? Would no. you have, would you have been happier for me? No, uh, do you know, but right. I, 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 so I had a great time with yeah. Simon and Nick and the, and the nice people. But, but he kept Nick? going, he kept going, he kept going to, uh, oi, oi, Nick, tell Ricky that story. And he th and Nick and Simon, well, wow, all it was, right, and they're ghost stories. That's, he loves them because they believe in ghosts. Oh. It's not, not just that. Not because they're great, oh, like, great sense of humour, just because they believe in ghosts. And you go and tell them that, he goes, how'd you explain that? I was going, well, I wasn't there. What was that one you told me and it was completely wrong? About the... It was, uh... Oh yeah, right. It's years ago. Oh yeah. Uh, some, some in olden days oh, sure. when ghosts like, roamed the earth. What's upon the time? You mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some doctor or something who was into like the way bodies work. Um, they got their head cut off. Uh, who and did the doctor? Yeah, he was doing a bit of an experiment. And he cut his own head off. He, yeah. Okay. And it was about. Um, he said, "When my head's in the basket, I'm going to blink my eyes." Right. Okay. Sorry. Hang on. Let, let him finish. <laughs> And, um... So the doctor has chopped right, his own head off and, and he's told everyone, I'm gonna blink my eyes to no, right, he's in the basket and he goes like, right, I'm gonna blink my eyes about, you know, as many times as I can. So quick, count them. And, and they count and he got to like 15 before he, he, he right. died. Right, now this is how Carl told me that. Till, till Nick Frost explained that, Carl told me, you know, he said, right, well a bloke, right, he had his head cut off and as, and it, when his head was in the basket, he went, count how many times I can blink. <laughs> and I went, well, that's rubbish. He went, no. And Nick went, well, no, he, he actually said, when my head's in the basket. I, he went, and Carl went, oh, I said, I said, Carl, do you know the subtle difference? Do you see the subtle difference? I have to say, though, guys, I still don't really understand what went on there. I really, you well, both well, lost me. The story is that a bloke who'd been found doing, um, uh, doing You a, mean uh, that Carl just explained it and that was a clear version? Because <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know what you're talking about, Carl. Well, this bloke. Had his head cut off for uh, experiments against God. He was a doctor in the, you know, uh, in olden times. Yeah. And when they cut his head off, 
Um, Why did they cut his head off? Um, because uh, it was- uh, He it was, was executed. Crimes against- Exactly, he was executed, yeah. And, uh, uh, he said to his assistant, when my head's in the basket, I'm gonna blink, count how many times I blink and write it down as an experiment, right? Carl told it to me, like, his head was cut off and he went in the basket, and when his head was in the basket, he looked up and said, <laughs> count how many times I blink. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love the difference in that story. Yeah. yeah. Both rubbish, yeah. but, um, you know, <laughs> one's, one's Why possible you, you and one isn't. Anything, you believe anything that you're told except when we tell you the truth. Right, yeah. here's one. Christ. Ghosts and that we got we got talking about. Sure. And Nick uh, Nick said, right. He said, you'll like this one. Huh. He said, uh, my uh, my auntie um, was having loads of problems. Why are you in whispering? A... It's not illegal it's like, to talk ooh. about ghosts on the radio. No, but, but it's eerie. And, this. Um, so um, <laughs> the auntie's in the house and that, and um, furniture's moving about all the time. Oh god. And they were like, no, oh, this is- Oh, Steve, you told me this one. This is such rubbish, mate. No, come I'm on, let's listen. Let's I'm gonna leave it to you. I'm gonna sit back and l enjoy it. I'm just gonna watch your face, Steve. <laughs> right. Sorry, so-, so I missed said, the beginning uh, there, Carl. There's an anti right, Basically, age. Nick's auntie. Right. Um, in the house, things moving around all the time. Oh, and it was really. just annoying every time she tidied up. It was like- oh, <laughs> It was just annoying. Making a mess. <laughs> it was one part annoying to two parts uh, scary. Yeah, yeah. So-, <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> oh, so stuff dear. was stuff was moving around all the time, and yeah. they said, right, rather than right, we need a housekeeper. Yeah. Rather than having the house a mess, uh, <laughs> until we sort Stop this out. Stop it! <laughs> I've got the vicar coming round! Stop moving I love stuff this. around! Oh, yeah, go on. They said that shouldn't be in the pants drawer. <laughs> Let's put all the furniture in one room, right? right. So uh, just have one room. That's a mess, and have all the others <laughs> empty. Because I love the poltergeist can't really o it can move for wardrobes around, but it can't open the door to put it in another room. Yeah. Poltergeist going, oh, I'm just making this room messy. I wish someone opened the door so I could. F Go on. Yeah, but so so all this stuff's in this room. So right? they moved all their furniture everything into one room. They put like the drawers in there and everything, and <laughs> it was really uncomfortable because they were all like on top well, of each they other. They sat in the room with all the stuff. Yeah, they had to because that's where the three piece suite was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh God! Right. All right. Oh God! So they sat there, like right, all crumpled up on that, but nothing can move because it's so tight. Things, yeah. I think things were trying to move. Yeah, but yeah everything yeah, yeah. was so tight. It's they just boxed like, that poor guys. So, um, so anyway, one night they sat there, like sort of a bit awkward watching the telly and that, and um, they hear some banging. Yeah. In the next room. <laughs> so uh, she goes, "Oh God, what's that?" Oh, he hadn't moved in, had he, the ghost? So, uh... Um, to some of the empty rooms. So there's this bang- <laughs> He's moved some friends and family in. There's this banging about going on, no, so... No, this, 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 She thing. gets up, right? Yeah. And what it is, they had the baby in the next room, because there wasn't much room for the cot. Right, so they left the baby with, with the ghost. <laughs> so, they go into the room where the baby is, <gasps> and the banging... Yeah. ...is like, do you know those plastic balls you get that you can chuck round the room and, like, they go mental? Right. The ones that you chuck once and yeah, they keep bouncing yeah, yeah, for ages. Yeah, yeah. That was bouncing around the room. Why? What, the baby all, had thrown it? It in all the walls. And the baby was there, stood in the cot, sort of laughing. Right. And looking at the ball and wherever it looked, the ball went. Yeah. And then she said, uh, she said, stop doing that. Yeah. And the ball just stopped. Did it? And it, and it rolled a bit and stopped. Right. So the baby had thrown the ball and it was watching it as it bounced around the room. It wasn't throwing it, it was in control of it. No, the point is, Steve, the baby had been doing it. It would have been the baby all along. The baby had been messing with the furniture. It was so a baby it's a that super had the power. Baby. <laughs> yeah, it's a baby that had the power. Special, ba it's special baby. It's a baby that powers. had the power. It's what, what a baby power? that had the power. What, the, power the power of telekinesis. Right. They were then trying to convince me that uh, telekinesis was not like all the other stuff that I didn't believe in, but that was a science. Right. Telekinesis was possible. Yes. Yeah. It's not. It's not like. It's not like ghosts and demons and uh, all that sort of. Telekinesis is different. Yeah. That, that's yeah. A science. Um, but ne but. Nick's auntie saw it, and I love the fact that you're telling me that someone else's auntie <laughs> saw it. <laughs> so I should be, I should be satisfied with that. Yeah, I, I, I should be satisfied with that. I mean, no. so does she still live in one room with all her possessions? No, I think the uh, baby the grew out of it. Apparently, it, it grew. <laughs> the up. baby grew out of it. it. So it doesn't use its telekinesis powers no. anymore. Well, no, it's no. like in Carrie, innit? She she was upset for a bit, and then she got over it. Okay, I'm mm. just gonna say one thing, Carl. Um, that was a film. Do you want to play a record or? <laughs> oh. Get free, all right? On XFM one hundred four. Point nine. Can, I, can I just tell you a story that Carl told me a couple of weeks ago? Is this another um, ghost story? Another yeah, it is, story? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I called him out, I was, what are you doing? He said, oh, I said, I've just been reading ghost stories again. He went, th he said, right, he said, you don't believe in them, but how do you explain this? So I went, go on, he said, uh, I'll tell you as he told me it, he went, um, blog, right, just sitting at home, 
just sitting at home doing, you know, watching telly with his, with his cat. And, uh, the phone rings and it's a bloke going, uh, oh, uh, is that fire, uh, in your oven okay now? Um, cause your wife called. And he went, Carl went, well, one, there was no fire in the oven. Two, he wasn't married. <laughs> I went, right. Go on, he went, well. Then, right, there was a knock at the door and there was two sort of people in sort of well, white coats and they, and they came and said, oh, we've come about that fire. Your wife called us. He went, one, there isn't a fire in my oven, and two, I'm not even married, right? And he said, and they saw the cat, and they sort of, they looked at the cat, it looked a bit weird at the cat, the cat came out, they looked nothing. Uh, uh, and, uh, he said, and then he went back, it sat down, phone rings, and they said, oh, uh, did they sort out the fire in the oven that your wife told us about? <laughs> he went, one, there is no fire in my oven, two, I haven't got a wife. And Carl went, what do you think of that? I went, that's not it. <laughs> he went, yeah, I went, <laughs> That's the end of the I went, story. What? 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 He went, well, how'd you explain that? I went, explain what? I thought he was gonna say, <laughs> a year later we got married but she died in an oven fire. <laughs> right? I thought it was gonna be that. And I went, That's what? people winding him up. Yeah. Or, 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 or um, someone did report a fire in an oven and their name was Johnson and they looked up Johnson they got the wrong thing, it was the gas board or that, <laughs> and they sent around to the wrong person, right? You know, he, he went, he went, yeah. I said, I explained it to him, he went, yeah. Why did they look at the cat funny? <laughs> Oh, man alive, Carl. <laughs> this is really weird, right? I was, um, <coughs> I was, uh, in my house once, right, and the doorbell rang. Yeah. Right, I opened the door, and there was no one there. Yeah. Right? And then I looked across the street, there was right, some kids and there were some kids running away. Yeah. Now, how do you explain that? Yeah. There was another time, right, where, like, I, I opened the door, and there was a bloke goes, you've ordered pizza. I went, I haven't ordered pizza. And I heard my mate upstairs giggling and putting the phone down. Yeah. How do you explain that? Carl, seriously, what did you, why did you tell me that story? What did you think, what did you think that was weird about that? The fact that it was three different people. Is this all the information? Is that the entire story? Have you, did it was you, three different people. Did you fall asleep and not read the end? A fire that didn't happen, about a wife that didn't exist, <laughs> and a cat that didn't look happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have a heart attack, Carl. What? I mean, why? Why did they look at the cat funny? Because what? cats don't don't like um, spirits, do they? <laughs> The other blokes were ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's it. So these are, these are kind of beetle about type ghosts. <laughs> these are ghosts who walk the st walk the earth as the ah! undead, just winding oh, people up slightly. That's lovely. That is but lovely. Seriously, and a cat that did not look happy. But seriously, why would ghosts start wander around just like winding people up? <laughs> oh. Maybe something did happen there years ago. Mm. Some fire. Some woman might have died in the house of a fire or something. Yeah. And yeah. uh it sort of all happened again. Bit yeah. Of a yeah. It's certainly a mystery. It's, well, certainly it's a mystery. Yeah. I mean, I can't. I. What's this I, book you were reading? You were reading a book, which is interesting enough. It was um. It was the fourteen fourteen times. Oh, Carl. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't, I, don't know, I don't know what to say. Well, I'll tell you this, Carl, there is a track that will, uh, that will spook you right out. <laughs> this is Warren Zevon from, uh, what was it, like, about 1979, early oh, 80s? Oh, great track. Werewolves of London. Play this, Carl. <laughs> but don't be scared. <laughs> from 1978, Carl, Werewolves of London by Warren Zevon. Are you a fan of that? It's alright, that's great track, track, isn't it? Fans right. of Warren Zevon, maybe if you should know he's got a new album out. Oh, as we speak. Although, if you're a fan, you probably know that already. Yeah. If you are a People fan, who hate him would yeah. be interested we'll be, in knowing yeah. that he's got a new album out. Yeah. Do you believe in, uh, I think Where Lycanthropy? Else? Is it, is it not called? What's that, sorry? Lycanthropy. What's Lycanthropy? Isn't that wa werewolfism? Really? Isn't it? Isn't it? Do you believe in that, Carl? They've, they've, they've found stuff, haven't they? They've found kids walking about who are all airy. Cause, right. uh, <laughs> cause they've, they've sort of grew up with, uh, wolves and that. Yeah. So. No. You see, <laughs> two things there. Um, Right, uh, you cannot take on acquired uh, characteristics genetically. So, if you grew up with wolves, it wouldn't suddenly make you hairy. Uh, there's two, been pictures, there's been pictures, there's been stories on it, and I reckon most people have, or a lot of people have seen the stories. It's a popular you thing. Mean, you mean the kids that are born hairy? No, no, there's kids who have been born hairy, right? Yeah, that's it. No, but listen, and they walk around on all fours, <laughs> and they drink milk from a saucer. <laughs> Oh, Steve, this is no, too remember, easy. No, remember, listen, remember that time with the maggot in the head? 
yeah. um, getting out with bacon and you were like laughing and then people called up and said, yeah, I've, I've seen that, I've read about that. Yeah, this but is the same you, thing have as you his... seen an XFM listener up close? Have you ever looked, They studied... drink milk from a saucer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they've got to be kept on leads, people who listen to this show. There's, there's no point in me telling you about stuff. There is, it's comedy you see, gold. When you, when you were out of school, did you keep arguing with the teacher saying you're talking rubbish there? Teachers didn't teach us about werewolf boys and ghosts. <laughs> they taught us maths. God. Right, tell the story about the man I'll cover. Right, in the same magazine as, uh, as the one with the, with the cat and the fire and that. Don't tell me that story again, it gives me the shit. Yeah, a cat that's <laughs> got a weird expression on his yeah. face <laughs> is against it, God. Anyway, this isn't a scary story, this was just, uh, like physics. Explain. Physics. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it right. was going on about the, uh, nuclear bomb and uh, how powerful it is. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> they put, they put a manhole cover on top of one. <laughs> Blew it up. Yeah. <laughs> Never saw the man I'll cover again. <laughs> <laughs> man alive, Carl. <laughs> Unexplained. What's that. going on there? Something weird is happening there. <laughs> oh. oh. If anyone has ever seen that man I'll cover, <laughs> yeah, uh, please yeah. get in touch. We'd love to know where it is. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> what sort of experiment is that? I imagine all these scientists on multi billion pound research budgets, they're going, we test everything. What would you do to man I'll cover? <laughs> Don't know. That's like letting a couple of students. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Have control yeah. Of a do you reckon it can send a traffic cone, cone yeah. into orbit? Go on then, put it on there. <laughs> I love that. I imagine that. What? Uh, what, of what value is that? <laughs> I might tell you what we could do. We could let the- put the manhole cover on it and aim it and then blow the bomb up and it would- <laughs> it would- the manhole cover would have someone's eye out! <laughs> fire it! See if you can fire manhole covers <laughs> off the nuclear bomb. I'll have a- tie bangers to a bomb, see if it's louder. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay, listen, Carl, play another track and then afterwards, can we probe your views on the- the week's news? If you want. We'll do a bit of a white van Carl session. <laughs> Today. Today. Today true. is the greatest, because yeah. we're back. That's true enough. All right. I hope people, uh, Rick, were listening to that loud, uh, in this lovely summer's day. Or, or, I mean, I'll call, no, not too loud. Well, don't, 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 don't annoy ears. people that, yeah. yeah um, yeah. White Rick, Van um, Carl. Yeah, White Van Carl, I mean, uh, for those that don't know, we do this, uh, We ask week. Carl the questions that the Sun asked someone else. That's right, the Sun every day asks, um, some, you know, average Joe, his views on the week's big stories. Mm. Carl, let me ask you now, um, what do you make of Prince Harry smoking openly at a polo club? Um, Are you aware of this story? No. Was it? Go on. Prince Harry, you know that he's one of the royals. Yeah. And he was seen smoking openly, openly, a fag, a cigarette. Uh, a polo third, third, third in line to the throne. Something like that, yeah. Imagine that. Someone hey? smoking a cigarette was third in line to the throne. A cigarette, Carl. Is it a non-smoking polo club? Do you know, I don't know, but, uh, but if it were, would that make things even worse for you? Well, no, yeah. seriously, what, what do you make of it? This is, this is, you know, the whole, you know, the, the furore is he's a role model, you know, he's a royal, should he be seen puffing away in a public place? I don't think it matters, does it? Not concerned for you? How old is he? Is he old enough to smoke? I think he probably is, yeah. Right, yeah. Well, yeah, I, I, I think the trouble with, um, this role model thing with anything that's legal, it should either be illegal or not. Yes. I just don't think you can impose things like that, well, yeah. uh, because you could say that it is bad for you and it is bad to start smoking and it really is bad for you and it, you know, it causes cancer and everything. But everyone knows so that, don't they? Well, yeah, but you should either make it illegal or shut up about it. So this is Carl you're asking, isn't I it? I am indeed. So, sorry, yes. so we can throw these questions uh, your way as well <laughs> yeah, if you fancy. Sorry, it. yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't so, matter. But Carl, what are your views generally? I mean, it's obviously cigarettes are, uh, perfectly legal and so on, but what about stronger narcotics? Because I know you're very scared of drugs and stuff, aren't you? You're yeah, I don't, I'm not a fan. I don't no, know. what's your concern? What's your worry? Just yeah. that you might get into them. Sure. It's like you might have them and go, oh, this is alright. Yeah. Exactly, Carl. Yeah. Um, exactly. Uh, Although I was talking to you about it earlier and you weren't that very, you weren't very sympathetic about a lot of young people who, who have perhaps gone to crack or smack. You, you, didn't you describe it as their own fault? Sometimes it is, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I could have turned to it where I grew up, but I said, well, I don't want to do that, it's not good for you. Sure. I avoided it. You turned to ghosts. So you've got uh, no sympathy for anyone who's, who's a drug addict? It's their own fault, is your- It depends, doesn't it? Sure. Do you know what I mean? You can be an addict if, I don't know, something, I'm trying to think of a nice way that well, you might- Well, most people start on stuff like that because some are really traumatic happen to them. Very few people go out for a laugh yeah. one night and, and, and go, let's all try it. Sure. So, uh, you know, but 
Yeah. Just anyway. say no, I suppose it's the, uh, the Just the say no, the listen end. to the, uh, cast of Grange Hill. Now, this will scare you. Now, this, Carl, you will be a little bit unnerved about this. Have you seen the film Jurassic Park? Yeah. You know what happened there? Well, according yeah. to the sign here, it says scientists are planning to clone mammoths for a theme park. Look at his face, look at that, he looks like a dog caught in the, the headlights of a car, he's terrified. I love Carl. He sprung to attention Carl. there. I love that's- is that- is that the best news you could have? Man moths. <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah, man Carl, moths. I man love moths. the fact that that's why he was so excited that they bred a man moth. What is what is this? Yeah, it's it's a human being that that hides in your wardrobe and eats an entire jacket in a day. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean, man moths? Mammoths. Mammoth. The big hairy cow the from the Ice Age. I mean, right. elephant. You're not so excited yeah. about that, then? <laughs> you can take or leave bringing back mammoths to life, but a man moth. A man moth is a different matter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if we'd- if we'd have <laughs> never brought that up, he'd have gone and told someone now. Yeah. You know, they've bred an half man, half moth. This and is that's what how, we this mean. how things start. This you is what we mean when you, you hear these ghost stories. Are you slightly stories? deaf? Is that it? When you hear these stories, you're slightly deaf. And his head- and his head was in the basket, and he went, count how many times I blink. Is it- I- is- Carl, uh, Carl, is English your first language? <laughs> Are you actually foreign? Is that yeah, the thing? Yeah, yeah. Should we well, speak slower? When we slower? say foreign, we, we mean not of this planet. Yeah. Should we speak slower? Would that be a help to you? No, go, go on. Next what do you one. make of that? Do you think that's good? Do we yeah, that's good to bring back, back mammoths? Uh, <laughs> These giant elephants. They're, they're slow, aren't they? It's not as if they're gonna, like, get out and run fast and they can't capture them. They'll probably be a fence, elephants, to be honest, Carl. They'll probably be a fence. No, but I'm saying- but they're- but you're asking it as if, like, oh, it could all go wrong, but it couldn't, could it? Well, really? but, but 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 the point was about uh, Jurassic Park is they thought it wouldn't go wrong. They thought they had it all under yeah, control. Well, have you learned nothing from uh, Jurassic Park, Carl? Dinosaurs would say, "Oh, f think about it before you do it." But <laughs> with a with a airy elephant, it's it's not going to. Not a concern for you. Would well, you go along to see him? Would you be interested in it? If it was in the area. <laughs> <laughs> He's, the he's great, isn't he? I'd love, I'd love a cue, Nothing right? impresses no, him. No, but what I'd like to do is Carl sitting like Yoda in a little cave, and I'd just like to see people like Tony Blair and, you know, Stephen Hawking's in a queue, and they go and say, Carl, got a bit of a problem. Um, yeah, and thinking it, of cloning a man and a moth. Yeah. Problem? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not an issue. No, if I'm in the area, I might cruise around <laughs> and have a look at it. Otherwise, just don't send it near my, uh, my um, clothes. Oh, that's fantastic. So, so it's just for a second. What, what, as, the, as the words man moth, came into your head. W how excited were you? I mean, were you both terrified and excited? For- just for the moment when you thought that they'd cloned a man and a moth? I pictured, um... What kind of face I'll, did he have? Was, did he have the moth's head or was it a man's head? Just a little head. Little man head. Right, what- what was his face? <laughs> what did it look like? Just- he just was like a bit like- A bit, bit shocked. perplexed, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, like so, it was like he'd been he'd been he'd been grafted onto the body of a moth yeah. without his, his consent. And when he was asleep, no yeah, he'd woken oh. up. He just he just went in for to have a goiter removed, yeah. and they said we've he replaced your with goiter wings. with the body of a giant moth. Yeah, just is that all right, Mr. Jenkins? Mm, so sorry. he had the head of a, a little was it a little boy or a man? Little man, right? Okay, and he's just bumping into a lamp. <laughs> <laughs> just bumping into a lamp. <laughs> if you, Carl, if you if you uh, went into hospital. And they'd done something. What, what's the worst thing they could do, right? What would you rather have done, do you, right? You wake up and you've got, um, lobster claws for hands. Right. You wake up and you've got duck's feet. Uh, or you wake up and you've got one horn coming out of your head. The worst thing. Yeah. Probably the, uh, <laughs> the horn coming out of my head. Why? Get in the way. <laughs> That'd be useful, wouldn't it? In fights and stuff. And, uh, for, like, parties, we would play well, points. I the lobster claws would also be quite handy, there. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Black Level, Motorcycle Club, spread your love. You enjoying it so far? Um, yeah, I suppose so. First show back? Yeah, it's not bad. It's great to be I'm back. I'm just thinking about that money, Rick, to be honest. I know, still playing on my must, mind. I know, yeah. Could we maybe get, like, a sort of telethon type thing going, or a little charity? Thing just sort of help me pay. You me. can't really ask people to send you money. Really? It's technically begging. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Unless so you're anyway. a are, you, are, are you a registered charity? <laughs> um, I suppose not. Not really. We could probably get you status. Yeah. But could I promise? I mean, could I pretend to give them something in return? I mean, am I allowed to sell things on the radio? Yeah, you are. Yeah. yeah. So. Although you probably, you probably get in trouble with uh, the authority if you're, you're using it to sort of like to your own. Okay, not like everyone else doesn't. Not exactly. Yeah. Free lunches and yeah. sponsorship and yeah, God yeah, knows yeah, what. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, yeah. Put the people that work here. Small fry. The 
yeah. scum. Exactly, the nobodies, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, 165 quid's pretty, it's quite a lot of money, so, I mean, if you wanna contribute anything, Rick, as I said before, you're more than welcome to. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I would if, it, if I felt any responsibility. Right. Or, yeah, or, or sure, cared. Sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, I got there too early, which is annoying. <laughs> um, what we should have done, really, was, uh, get you your plane and come back, cos I'd have had time. Do you know, I, I was gonna mention <laughs> it at the time, but I didn't want to, cos I knew the answer would be no. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh, Carl. Oh, I, 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 really, I've had a great time. I've forgotten, I've forgotten how good it was just to have a normal con- I say normal, just to have a conversation with you. Have you been looking forward to this? You're, he's really down today, isn't he? He's down, man, isn't just he? Just a bit tired. But it's interesting, cos I said to him, I said to him, did you enjoy Edinburgh? He spent this, the week up in Edinburgh, yeah. obviously, and uh, he said, yeah, well loved him, he loved it up there, he's been mm. partying every night, and he actually enjoyed it, and I've never, I've never met him when he's actually enjoyed anything before, he's never enjoyed anything, as far as I know, and his I'm depressed that we weren't involved. His, pa his, his paper round. He loved the paper round, and this Best. is the first time yeah, he's He was talking about that the other day as well, but uh, I said to him, uh, he really thinks that that paper round he had when he was 14 was the best job. He never had. Yeah, he still yeah. thinks it's the best job because he was. Own, he said he was his own boss. Well, no, you weren't. <laughs> yeah. He went. Well, I can get on my bike and think. And he said, "I bet if I phoned those people who I delivered the papers to, they'd say it was the best delivery they've ever had." He said, "In fact, I bet a lot of them have chucked in the delivery because it went downhill." This is all. Yeah, sort, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. thinking this. as yeah. He went along. Yeah. Didn't you? Yeah. Imagine phoning someone up and saying, "You don't remember me, but I used to deliver your paper ten years ago. Was it the best delivery service <laughs> you've ever had?" No, but if <laughs> I said I delivered it ten years ago. Um, you used to, if you got up at like six in the morning, it was there for you. Yeah. There's no other paper boy who could guarantee that they'd have that paper when they got Carl, out if of you could earn enough money, would you do a paper round again? If you, if that was your job, but we, you were being paid enough to make a living from it, would, would that, is that something you think about? Uh, do you think you'd enjoy it as much nowadays? Yeah, I reckon I would, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, listen to some music. Sure. Uh, a thousand pound a week, would you do the best yeah, at- Yeah, Would you really? Yeah. Is would, there anyone- out there, who is willing to test that? So anyone who's willing to pay Carl, right, a, a sum of a grand, yeah. to take a week off work and deliver papers, just for that week. All day though, it's all day. No, 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 no. I'll what? get up and the the customers will have their paper. Yeah, but can I say what street it is? No, because uh, no, no, it's the M25. <laughs> See, you are being paid a thousand pounds. Yeah, thousand pounds. Pounds. Oh, no, you got to deliver the M25. I'll tell you what. Let's 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 take the mood down a little bit and play one of the most beautiful songs I've been looking forward to getting. I just play this. To be honest, it's Jimmy Webb's uh, version of Galveston. Galveston, there by the brilliant Jimmy Webb. Uh huh. Who wrote it? Who wrote it? He wrote it. Yes. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really, Jimmy Webb, who wrote it? Yeah. It was all one sentence. Yes. Did I confuse you? Again, yeah. With my it, speech patterns. It's just, just using the English language is always helpful, really. But compared to Carl, I'm, I'm Oscar Wilde, aren't <laughs> I? I suppose so. <laughs> Be afraid. Electric Soft Parade on XFM 104.9. Not long to go on our, uh, on our return, a triumphant return, I think. Uh, oh, I well, think the papers would be saying, Steve. Yes, yes. Um, Carl, um, I've I met Carl a couple of times in our, our, our sabbatical, and, uh, he, uh, said to me once, he said, um, oysters. I said, have you ever tried oysters? I, said, I, I, I don't like them. And I went, uh, he said, oh, it's just, just a thing about swallowing them whole, you know. He went, well, the reason you have to do that is just they're, they're fatally poisonous. <laughs> and if you bite into them, they kill you. And I went, well, of course they don't. He went, yeah. I went, well, of, co of course. <laughs> they wouldn't. What have you chewed on? I said. He said no. I said, well, so you swallow them whole and they're not poisonous. He went, yeah, ah, see. He said, so he said, when you swallow heroin in a in a Johnny, he says that doesn't kill you, does it? <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Oh. And then uh, about a week later, he went, I was wrong about them. <laughs> you are. Yeah. I went. Well, he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what did you say? It's if you eat them and then you have some whiskey. <laughs> They, they turn deadly when, when whiskey comes into contact with them. Yeah, when, when, uh, when they've had a drink. <laughs> when they've had a drink, they get a bit rowdy in your stomach. They right. start fighting, they can yeah, cause hilarious. So, 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 so what are you saying now? Are you saying you don't believe that? Am I saying what? Are you saying you don't believe Look, that? he thinks he's got us here. He thinks he's got us here. Yeah, I don't believe that if you eat an oyster, then drink some whiskey, you die. You might not die straight away, but... You won't Eventually, feel. 50 years time. If you've got, you've got to keep on drinking whiskey. Uh, yeah, 50, a bottle a day. 50 or 60 years later, he was dead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oyster and a bottle of whiskey a day. <laughs> oh. Then, out of nowhere, 40 years well, later. Where does this information come from, Carl? If, if some doctor called up now. Yeah. And put you right, would you believe him? If it wasn't Dr. Fox. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> what about the airy, airy lads growing up with the werewolves and that? They didn't grow up they with didn't werewolves. werewolves. Grow up with werewolves. You've confused they're about three just different Just a genetic stories, mutation where, the, you know, they were born with a uh, very, very hirsute. There were a couple of kids, yes, we know. They didn't grow up with wolves and you can't kill them with a silver bullet. I mean, you're confusing two things. There were you? some kids who were very, very hairy, yes. Yeah. They're in folklore. There were some kids who grew up with wolves, yes. I don't think the two are connected. Yeah. Yeah. There's no such thing as werewolves, Carl. You, you believe me. I saw a documentary on it on the History Channel. You'd have loved it. You, you, you grew the up with a magpie. Werewolves. You know, you don't flap around, do you, and steal people's jewellery? Uh, what was the thing you told me about snails? Uh, have you ever had any um, <laughs> any post that that looks like it's been opened? Occasionally, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, what it is? It's not your postman having a a sneaky look. A sneaky look. Problem is, right? Uh, slugs. <laughs> the problem, slugs. Slugs at <laughs> night. They like nipping about and that, and it gets a bit cold. And in London, like in the country, they go into the grass, don't they? Right. But in London, it's like, oh, what can we do? <laughs> and um, they go in letter boxes. Slugs right? go in letter. Get in letter, letter bo boxes. It's nice and warm in there. Uh, dry and what have you, and um, <laughs> these are homeless slugs, aren't they? The ones that lost their shell. When they're in there, they only found out that they love glue. <laughs> they and love they've, glue. They've been eating uh, eating the glue off the stamps. Right. And um, <laughs> people have been getting charged for posts because it hasn't had stamps on it. It's like, well, I put a stamp on it. Yeah. It's like it's, slugs have been eating it. <laughs> sure. And they also <laughs> eat the glue that's on the actual envelope shutter. And it's a real popular problem. This that. Uh, <laughs> Letters are being lost and opened and all that stuff. Yeah. Slugs. <laughs> I like, are slugs like stealing postal orders and things and cashing them in and stuff? Yeah, again, you know, if there's a doctor, if there's a postman. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, with us two expert witnesses, a doctor and a postman. So, uh, so postage is a real problem. Um, so uh, it's, when we see, when we see uh, a slug's trail, or a snail's trail. It's glue. That's the glue they've stolen, is it? That's, they've just, that's a little... I'm we, not, I'm not gonna say yes that to that, cause I'm not follow, sure. But we could follow that trail and, and find the, them, and they'd have a big, sort of... <laughs> big uh, uh, Yeah, our stamps and... Yeah, <laughs> there they are! Like, birthday cards for our aunts and stuff. Yeah, but a two pound notes. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Wow. Slugs. Wow. wow. So, oysters <laughs> and whiskey kill ya, and slugs... Be very careful, your if you're gonna go out this evening, you're thinking of having a whiskey, maybe some oysters, be very, very careful. Yes. And little by little, this <laughs> is XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, who are you? Uh, my name's Steve Merchant, good to see you. Thanks. Uh, with us, uh, the producer in the studio is Carl Pilton, and he'll be doing the buttons. <laughs> yeah. You made a good effort there, but, uh, <laughs> once again... <laughs> got bored. <laughs> Words to your enemy, Rick, <laughs> and they defeated you once again. <laughs> Yes, run out of steam oh, with the sentences. Every week I think, well, I'm really gonna make an effort yeah. now, I'm gonna- I've, I've chosen some records. Yeah. That's it. That's it, that's as far as it goes, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Maybe you should write out what you're gonna say at the top of the show. <laughs> <laughs> write that out. Get a nice no, big crayon. Be, I like to keep a little bit of, you know- A little bit of something, a little bit of spark, yeah. a little bit of liveliness to it. Yeah, sure. yeah. Sure, yeah. sure, 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 sure. Yeah. How are you? Good to- good, good to see you. Yeah, it's great, it's great to, uh- <laughs> It's great uh, to be out, <laughs> out of the house <laughs> yeah. again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, just um, I was gonna say, because we've been doing this uh, for a long time now with a little break, um, but XFM are bringing new listeners all the time. I've heard four or five a week. Really? Yeah. New wow, listeners tune in to XFM. One Radio four point nine. Beware. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, we might take it for granted the people that know who we are, know who you are, know who Carl is. Sure. Um, Oh, now, if, if if you, you know, if you're a regular, then you know exactly who we are. But, um, for those of you who don't, uh, I say, I'm, I'm Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais, a BAFTA award-winning actor and, yeah, uh, yeah. and writer. Steve Merchant, um, all, all those. A friend of yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, this is the important thing, Carl Pilkington. Absolutely. Our, um, producer. I say producer, he was the bloke who was lumbered with a job. When I said, listen, I see I used to run the desk in the old days, I, was like, I used to press the buttons and run the desk and everything, and now I said, listen, I've been on the telly, I do not press my own buttons. And Carl said, well, I don't really work weekends. And they went, well, you do if you want to keep your job. Absolutely. And we were lumbered with him. And then we discovered that he's not just a, a little, like a little dork, a little manky sort of idiot. Sure, he's sure. He's got, he's got nice shirt. He's got, you know what I mean? He's got something else. Absolutely. He's got a certain, brings another dimension, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, he, he started having a little chat and, 
we discovered that he had him. quite a lot to say. Mm. Well, I, I think you're right, and I think, um, I was wondering maybe we, we should maybe play another tune, but after that, I just think we should re-familiarise our radio audience with yeah. Carl and any new listeners, just get, let, you know, somehow gonna let them get to know the real Carl again. Well, if you are new, you'll, you'll find that we like some uh, old songs, some new songs, some yeah. chit chat uh, we get serious sometimes, there's oh, some yeah. tears and some laughter. Yeah. We kicked off with Oasis' new one, little by little, we're gonna go <laughs> back in time now to Iggy Pop and his Stooges <laughs> with I'm Bored. Iggy Pop on board on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Steve Merchant here, isn't Yeah, you? little Carl Pilkington. Mm -hmm. Well, to reintroduce or introduce people for the first time to Carl, um, I think we should have a... Yeah, a maybe sort of a kind of a quick Q&A, Carl, and we don't need sort of lengthy answers from you. We don't need lots of detail. Um, right. you know, it can be, uh, just a couple of sentences. Just to get to a flavour of who you are. Yeah, so right. firstly, uh, name obviously Carl Pilkington. Age, Carl? Uh, I'll be, uh, I'll be thirty next month. Really? This month. No, next. What, where are we? <laughs> 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 I don't think we need to ask I any more questions. I think we've done it. That's I it. I think we've Welcome done it. Welcome to the world of Carl <laughs> Pilkington. <laughs> I think that. Oh, I thought it would take three or four I questions thought it was be at least, to really yeah. explain that was, that what was the Carl first was about. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> oh, oh, absolutely God. incredible. But, well, um, but you oh. know, we can't really leave it there because, um, no. because we, uh, we haven't uh, got enough else to do to fill yeah. up the two hours. So, um, no. let's, let's pursue this line of inquiry. Yeah. Uh, so, um, age, what was the age, Carl, in a couple well, of months? When were you born? I'll be, uh, 72. Right, what month, what day? I'm on the cusp. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the cusp of the day? <laughs> well. Um, 23rd of September. Okay. 72. <laughs> so anyway, okay, right, good. And uh, uh, you were talking there about, um, obviously a star sign where you're on the cusp. Yeah. You believe in that, do you? No. Nope. You don't believe in star signs? No, not really. But you do believe in ghosts, I understand. No, because the Paranormal. star Yeah, but the star Ten. sign thing, you've got how many, how many different star signs, are they? Twelve, innit? Right, and then you've got, like, loads of people. Yeah. So you, you do just, the math. So they're saying that, <laughs> you know, there's only twelve different sorts of people in the world. Exactly. That's yes. exactly right. It's, it's made up, it's made up nonsense, it's non-science. It's pseudoscience. It's, yes. So it's, it's, it's it's hairy man and um dyed hair woman science. Yes. Mm. Isn't it? All right. Yeah. Anyway, back to uh, you Carl. Where were you born? In uh in Manchester. Okay. What uh GCSE results did you get? <coughs> I got uh was it an E? I got an E, you in, got history. An e in history. And how, how did, did you, you find out that, that information? You found out because you thought you you didn't you couldn't remember what you got. You didn't turn up and you thought you'd done about 3. One of which uh, wasn't history, and I actually- knew, I knew I did art. Yeah, you didn't. I'm telling you, you didn't, because we checked. Yeah. You did one. You turned up for history, you did history, you got an no, E in I history. I definitely did art. I what? made a little clay man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to register for O-levels. You don't just do it and then phone up and say, how was that? Yeah. And they go, I'm oh, sending don't. you a clay man. So <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> yeah, Send me yeah. a grave. Yeah. It's all things, there's forms to fill out and yeah. things like that, Carl. Anyway, yeah. go anyway. on. Um, <laughs> who was your closest childhood friend? Closest? At what age? Well, when you were young, when you were Oh, a I kid. remember this. It's a fella. Um, so well, is it someone making, isn't there's, it? There's, well, he wasn't really a close mate. Darren Buckley was me. Darren Buckley? Yeah. He, he was me. Tell close us briefly mate. about Darren. I've forgotten about Darren. He's the one who, um, all the, all the girls liked him. He Did had, they? Uh, he had permed hair. He used to <laughs> have his hair like a footballer. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. Were you jealous of him? His were you dad was a copper. Did you hang around with Darren, like, in the hope of getting maybe his kind of cast offs? Nah. I, I, it's, it's weird with me, and I, I, I wasn't that bothered about having loads of mates and that. I sort of, sure. I had lots of mates, but I could do without them. You had a magpie, didn't you? Yeah, I, was happy, didn't you? I was happy playing with my magpie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what happened on, to him? On. It, uh, flew away. Yeah. But yeah. I wasn't bothered, because it was giving me grief towards the end, wasn't it? It was, <laughs> it was popping me, me grifter tyres and that. Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> flying down, pecking me head. Sure. Now, you went to school with a number of different interesting people. Uh, some of whom two were of which, freaks. I understand, uh, had big heads and webbed toes. Is that right? Yet they were not related to each other and they weren't friends with each other. Why weren't they friends with each other? <laughs> because that'd be obvious. <laughs> <laughs> did they, did they wear shoes or did they walk around in their, <laughs> in their webbed, uh, Were they good at feet? swimming? Were they good at swimming? Uh, I don't know. I don't think they ever, ever went swimming. Did they ever talk, did they, did they ever look over at each other and think, yeah, we but. should hang out more. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, uh, <laughs> something in the week as well, there was another cool. lad at school, had a pigeon chest. <laughs> yeah, what? Can we come back to this? He had a pigeon I chest. I think we should play a record, Carl, because we- I think we've hooked them now. Yeah. I think- I There's think- There's no one switching off now, Rick. No, play a record. <laughs> Blair, 
Coffee and TV. Carl, uh, I said it's not the best Blur song when, when it was playing. You know, I'm not, I don't want to diss it, but you know, it's not the best one. I mean, that's Absolutely that's not. fact. Sure. You know, yeah. Carl went like the video though, a little milk carton. Yeah. Bit sad. It's tragic, isn't it? <laughs> he went. In the, this is all to himself. I'm not even joining in. <laughs> and then he went. Yeah, but it's all right at the end. He goes to heaven. He finds a little girl milk carton. Just lives out a little thing. And is is that yeah. like you on your paper round that little milk carton walking around like that? I imagine you. Oh, people don't know about. Uh, if you just tuned in, Carl had a paper round. It's his favourite job ever. And he maintains it's the best job he's ever had, isn't it, Carl? Wait. Go on. I don't know what's so weird about that. It's a paper round. Yeah, but look. look Forget it's not all the most that. fulfilling of look jobs. At, look at the way it works, right? You, you get it out of the way at the start of the day, so you've got the rest of the day to yourself. <laughs> um, <laughs> just, just, just same as signing on. Your own, your own boss, you know. Same as signing on. Well, you're not your own boss. The guy yeah. at the news agent's your <laughs> boss. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But- <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you, That's you, great. You, you've proven me wrong there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nah, not really. Was that stand up in court? Well, you were found with the dagger. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Was I? <laughs> what, when are we, uh, when are we playing the new game? Oh, Carl's got a new game. Carl's oh. very excited. Oh, just, but just, we were just talking about something before. Yeah, the, right, the freaks used to go. You, you had uh, people with big heads, two web feet, didn't hang around each other. That would be too obvious. Um, you had a fellow with a pigeon chest. Mm. Yeah, what's the story with the pigeon chest? Don't know how it happened. <laughs> it was like, it, it looked like somebody had sort of hit him on the back with a big hammer. <laughs> and it had come out at the front. Yeah. And I've never seen it since. Could that have been the answer? What, why is, why yeah, he had it? Why had it? Possibly, I suppose, in your neck of the woods. Yeah. Don't know, never asked him. It's just come back to haunt you, has it, the pigeon chest? No, it's just that, uh, you know, when you, when you mentioned about kids at school, I forgot all about him. Mm. You're talking about the kids with the web feet and the big heads. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, I forgot about the little old, uh, the pigeon, chest pigeon boy. Yeah, pigeon boy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, I, I, are you, I, I'm a big fan of that TV show, it's on digital TV, a lot of people won't have it, but, uh, Inside the Actors Studio with James yeah. Lipton. Yeah. And he's, he interviews lots of big Hollywood stars, and he always asks them these same questions at the end. Can I just run a few of them past you? Go on. Okay. So, um, if you could do any other profession other than the one you do now, what profession would you do? Uh, can you just change that to apart from a paper round? Apart from a paper round. Oh, If you do any other okay. profession, Carl. Um. And it doesn't matter about like. It doesn't matter if you've got the skills or anything. I in an ideal world, if you had the ability. Well, I, I think I'm about to buy somewhere, so I reckon something you know, using using tools and like doing a bit of plumbing and that. So a plumber. Well, sort of an all rounder. Right, right. A, a handy, handyman. A handyman. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. you know you don't get paid that much, but it's useful, isn't it? So. But you'd useful. get your own show, couldn't you, with Carol Smiley eventually? Well, well, all that, but the money that you don't make, you save by not having to pay someone else to do the. Do right, okay. I, mean? I, d I don't know what that sentence meant. <laughs> right, right. No. A plumber, how much, how much is the average plumber on? The money you don't make, <laughs> you save on not getting someone else to do it. <laughs> no, just think of that. No, look, break that sentence down. Are there any- Sorry, Rick, sorry, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. people who live in glass cattle. houses. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, let's just go back to Lipton quickly. We've got a couple to get through here. Sorry, so, right, um, your, 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 your favourite noise or sound? Uh. Favourite sound or noise? Ooh. Is it me? No. It's not uh, me. Hang on a minute. It's not me! Are you sure it's not me, Carl? I like, I like Elvis. Noise. Elvis. Uh, in Elvis. The, in the ghetto. The sound of Elvis. Uh, Elvis in the ghetto. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. And your least favourite noise or sound? I, d I don't think it should really be records and music. Noises. Things that you hear uh, at home or whatever. Maybe like a sound of a- The least favourite noise. Least favourite. The sound of- Probably like uh, The sound of ghosts? Fire engines and that. <laughs> Right. That's, that's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Except if your house was on fire, presumably. <laughs> I think it's a bit unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> you think oh. they're just doing it to wind people up? I live on like a busy street and it's happening all the time and it's, yeah. it is like, just sort of have a blast of it and people will hear it. You sure. don't have to keep it going. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, yeah. Sure. So that, that is, yeah, okay. pretty annoying. And, um, uh, if heaven exists, Carl, when you get to the pearly gates, what would you like God to say to you as he welcomes you into heaven? What would you like God to say to you? Uh, who asks these? What, what shows this? It's a programme where, um, celebrities are interviewed by a guy, uh, an American interviewer, and he always asks these questions at the very end. What would I say to God? What no, would you say what, to God what, what, when, if, if you believed in heaven, and if heaven exists, when you eventually go up to heaven and you're welcomed in through uh, the gates in by your God- your parker and your stussy t-shirt and yeah. your- What do you want God to say to you as he welcomes you in? Say, uh, you alright? Uh, I don't know, just be, just be friendly. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reindeer section. <laughs>
Beautiful. Yeah, nice stuff. Um, it's a kind of Scottish super group, lots of different artists from, uh, Scottish Sebastian bands. Ben and Sebastian. Sebastian. Is it a singer from them? Uh, it may well be, yeah, on that particular track. Different people, Mole Historical Society, Idlewild, Teenage Fan Club, different people from all those bands. Get together with a guy called, uh, Gary Lightbody from Snow Patrol and he, uh, writes and the And all tunes. that on XFM 104.9, Steve. Absolutely. Uh, let me just name that track. That track was Grand Parade from their current album, uh, Son of Evil Reindeer. <laughs> Feeder, come back around on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Uh, <laughs> but who are you? Oh, thanks for asking, Rick. Steve Merchant. Uh, with us, Carl Pilgerton. Well, Carl, um, now I know I shouldn't, uh, but I met Carl in the week again, I, Steve. I told you you shouldn't do I this, know. you know, you should But then when the he weekend. starts, he starts saying things like, oh, is this loud with the people? I go, no, save it, save it, and we just sit there and I'm scared to talk in case he comes up. But, um, you did tell me a couple of little things, didn't you? True stories that you know that, that I mean I enjoy. Right. Can you tell um, Steve one about the doctor? Right. Oh God. Um, What's what, where, is this something that happened to a friend of yours or is this? Uh, no, no, I read about it. You read about it. Okay. Um, there's this little lad. Right. <laughs> okay. First of all, it's it's years ago, right? When right, they didn't have times. they didn't have decent doctors in like every town and that. Yeah. And uh, this little kid is dead ill, right? Yeah. And the local doctor. <laughs> Well, there's a phone call involved, so I don't yeah, really well, give the impression it. that it's like medieval, medieval times. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but I didn't say that, I just said it's years ago. Go on so on. this kid's ill, right? Yeah. And he's, uh, he's lying in the bed and uh, he's, mm. he's all like, all going funny colour and that. Yeah. And, uh, and his mum says, I'm gonna get the local doctor around. The local doctor comes round and uh, he says, oh, so I don't know, don't know what's up with him. He said, um, so leave it with me. Leave it with me. He well, said, the doctor uh, said that. I'll have a, yeah. He said I'll um, I'll I'll phone up uh, a top doctor. Okay. Who was in America or somewhere like that. Yeah. And uh, so he goes to the phone in his office and he calls America and because it's years ago the phone line isn't that good it's all crackly and that right. Yeah. So he's talking to the doctor and he's saying I've got this kid he's a funny colour and. Uh, you know, he's it, really weak and that. I don't yeah. know what's He's up not with him. giving him much to go on. <laughs> right? Sure. So, uh, so the American doctor, right? Yeah. He goes, Yeah, what you wanna do? And it's all breaking up, right? Yeah. He goes, What you gotta do? You gotta, uh, it's all breaking up. You've gotta give him some, uh, parrot's blood, right? Some parrot's blood? Well, that's what he thought he said, but the line was really bad. Yeah. He meant parents' blood, but he, he heard that he said parrots' blood. He oh said, right, I'll, I'll, I'll do that, leave I, it with I me. I can see where this is going. He goes, goes to, uh, you know, a pet shop. Yeah. <laughs> he <laughs> says, give us like half a dozen parrots. Sure. Takes them round to the kid's house, takes the blood from the parrots, puts it into the kid, kid's fine. <laughs> the kid's fine? <laughs> I've it, never- It worked. <laughs> such a load of shite. <laughs> In my life, I've never heard such twaddle, such just made up, enhanced, exaggerated. Oh, in what my a load life. of old rubbish. I car. mean, when he told me this, he said the doctor said, "What do I do?" And the doctor on the other end said, "Give him some blood." And the doctor went, "Where do I get blood from?" <laughs> <laughs> so hang on, wait, I just need to- I just need to Where do I get from? From his- Give him some parents' blood. Give him some parents' blood. Give him some parents' some- some parents' blood. Yeah. I- um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> But hang on, I just need to know where you Sorry, read this. Carl. Where was this- where did I you read I stitched you up. You know when he said- he said, so do you believe it? I went, tell it to Steve. He went, do you believe it? I went, tell it to Steve. <laughs> Carl, but where did you read it? it? That- that was on the internet. What, about where is illnesses. it on the internet? Where, I'm what, always what looking pages? at stuff. I was looking at stuff this morning because of um, because <laughs> of Yora Geller last night. <laughs> <laughs> eating uh, eating all that funny food and that, and also uh, they all got a bit scared last night, didn't they? With a with a snake. Hmm. I didn't see that. Is this um, I'm a celebrity? Get me out. Of yeah, here? yeah. He got all worried about a snake getting on the uh, sort of wandering about in between the sleeping bags and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> and. Um, they were all scared, and it is so leave easy. Leave it with me. Sorry, the doctor says, leave it with me. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, leave it with me. Well, they were all scared because there's a snake, and it's so easy to find stuff out before the before the. Where are they? Where is this jungle? <laughs> Australia, right. I think. Before they went, give it half an hour on the internet. <laughs> I found out with snakes, you don't need to worry, okay. right? Um, they're deaf. They haven't got any ears. Right. So as long as you you're really quiet, creep around, they'll yeah. probably leave you alone. Yep. And also, they don't have eyelids. 
Uh-huh. Um, so they were suggesting if one's coming towards you, just, like, kick sand in its eyes. Because <laughs> yeah. it can't blink and it leaves it a bit, like, annoyed yeah. and it wanders off. But they didn't <laughs> do any research before they went. Yeah. And that's- that, your, your, I think your knowledge would hold you in good stead. I don't think you need to know any more than you know. Um, well we're gonna come back to that cause he also explained to me where, um, uh, a saying comes from that I want to, you to be part of. But, um, Oh and also we should mention as well, Carl, you've come up with a, a competition, is this right? Brilliant competition. You, have you, have he you thinks this, this up? He thinks oh. this can go to television. Is this an idea you've come up with? Yeah. Carl, I'm so looking forward to so, it. So, uh, I mean I'm- I'm looking forward to it. Um, continuing, uh, our exposure of myths. And, and Legends of Rockful Tale, we expose that myth that some maybe older rockers have, have had it and they've got no- they, they were never any good and yeah. the kids today- oh, I don't want to hear that. People like Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart's a great artist. This, uh, He's a slightly laughable man but a great artist. Let's go back to when it was- when it was rocking. When he cut the mustard. Yeah. <laughs> Rod Stewart, you wear it well. Great tune. On XFM 104.9. Yeah. This doctor, I mean, we <laughs> should find out who he is, really, and if he's still practicing, because it- it worries me a little bit that he, you know, mm. he did that. Also, I mean, he thinks he's got away with it, but how could he be sure those parrots wouldn't talk? True. True. Do you know yeah, what I mean? There yeah, were six yeah. of them, they probably got together and they pro they probably put it on the internet. I mean, it, I- I feel that that story, Carl, <laughs> it- it asks more questions than it answers. <laughs> yeah! Really. Like most of your stories. Yeah, that's the problem. I always feel them- I always feel like I need a little bit more information. Like, yeah. did the parrot boy continue to live? <laughs> yeah. You know, to a ripe old age, or did he yeah. die weeks later <laughs> after this charlatan doctor who was yeah. going around, you know, spurious and- Did he break right. his nose trying to crack a big nut? Mm. No, I think- I think he's, uh, he was alright. He- he lived to a- See, yeah. I'd have shouted- if I was that doctor, I'd have shouted- that down the phone. Are you sure you said parrot's blood? Yeah. You parrot's sure it was parrot's no, blood? Listen, I-I mean, uh, you know, I'm not the best doctor in the world, but d d did you say parrot's blood? <laughs> yeah, but what you're forgetting is you're going back to the time where, like, they used leeches to do, like- No, 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 we're going back to the late 70s if there's a <laughs> phone call to America direct. <laughs> Come on, Carl, they weren't calling America, like, in the medieval times or- or in the Victorian age. Come on, think about it, Carl. Yeah. You know, it's, this has got to be like the, the like, you know, 30s or 40s, <laughs> the earliest. <laughs> you know? <All> right. <laughs> I'm intrigued to know where this is. I think there's someone on the, on the web who's just putting information on there to lead you astray. Yeah. I cause you're the only person who finds this stuff. Other people are using this to write what were you, thesis. What were you looking up that then? What were you, what were you I'm looking always, I always look up weird stuff. What were yeah. you looking for? But what do you type in the search engine to find parrot blood stories? What were you looking for? There's this woman with a weird head. <laughs> Why were you looking for that? What were you doing? Just because I'd heard about it. I'd heard, like, someone talking about it on another station. Right. right. About this woman with a- with a funny head. Right. <laughs> I love the fact- I love the fact you're intrigued with these things. You go in the basement of Waterstones or Dylan's or somewhere and there's these- there's these medical books that you're loving, mate. Yeah, but this is free on the internet, isn't it? It's all there. Yeah. So what do you type in? Weird head woman or- <laughs> <laughs> Lady with head. <laughs> yeah. Weird, weird, weird people or something I put in. Sure. Yeah. Did you, did you come up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seven thousand uh, hits, Carl <laughs> talking to. Well, it's all there, isn't it? It's interesting. The one that I was telling you before about um, the what's the name? The the lost letter. The lost letter. What's the lost this? Uh, lost postcard that's uh, just turned up. Some yeah. woman uh, sent a postcard years and years ago to to a niece or something, right? Yeah. And, and her niece was like three years old sure. back then. And just now, like I think like yesterday or the day before, it turned up, the postcard turned up 74 years late. 74 years late? It took 74 years. And that three-year-old girl's been living in the same house that whole time? <laughs> well, that, yeah. Sure. <laughs> There's no way You see what that. we mean? But there's always a question you can ask <laughs> to just scratch the credibility of these stories. Yeah. There's always- it's like the apocryphal tale. Was this the is slugs? It, was this those slugs from last week? Yeah, were they were holding back? Because they're slow, because the postman slug is useless. His round takes him 74 years. Then he's got to go back to the beginning he's got 74 years and they can't carry the bag. But that's why they go- that's why they turn to glue. That's why they turn to glue. Oh. It's pitiful. It is pitiful. So, so you don't believe that someone sent a postcard years ago <gasps> and somehow it's been stuck in the bottom of a post bag or something and it's only just- Stuck in the bottom of a post bag? Yeah. That means that there's like an, a 95 year old postman who's still yeah. wandering around. Did, did, did you- did you have to pay like the- the difference and the charges? Uh. Cause presumably th 
It, it, was it a, wouldn't have had Queen Elizabeth's, uh, It was, it it was a penny on, black, it? presumably, was it? Yeah. <laughs> what would be on the stamp? It would have been invalid, surely. <laughs> Dunno. See, That's these are the what? questions no, you no, should no, ask no, yourself. No, no. Cause if it's the postman's fault, the post office can't turn out. Who was only three at the time himself, wasn't he? He was dead. No, he is dead. Yeah, he'll be well and truly dead now. Yeah. But the fact is that the post office made an error. <laughs> yeah. Right? They lost this letter. Sure. Mm. It's only just turned up. They can't turn around and say, sorry about this. I hope it isn't urgent. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's turned up 74 years late, and by uh, the way, you owe us 25 pence. Yeah. Yeah. They wouldn't yeah. do that, would no, they? No, that's so, true. That's true. So that's true. You and you're asking but, questions, though, you see? That's, that's true, you see? So, t um, you, you're interested in, like, where stains come from as well, aren't you? Because yeah. you, you told me one of the week, what that, I don't know if Steve's aware of that. Do you want to tell Steve this one? What's this a saying? Can we do this quiz? D Let's do, do this We'll first. do the quiz later. I know you're excited about the quiz. Let's do that later. But what's this saying? Right. Uh, what is the saying? Chucking a baby out with the bathwater. Yeah. Have you, know you that? Heard that? Have you heard that phrase? Uh, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Well, yeah. 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 Right. Wh wh how would you use that? Well, um, how would I use that? Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I suppose if you've, maybe you've been discussing something, you've come up with some plans, but you're slightly worried and, um, you know, you might abandon the whole plan, whereas there might be some ideas in there which are still worth retaining. Exactly. So you don't want to throw the baby out with, with the, the bathwater. bathwater. There might right. be something you can just change yeah. and you don't want to, yeah. yeah. A similar, you know, there might be a few ideas you can salvage from an, an otherwise worthless one. Well, the saying, right, comes from, like, years ago again. Mm -hmm. And, um... Pre or post phone. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> Ages and ages ago when, like, you know, the bloke worked in the house, you know, he was, like, the coal man, and then you had, like... <laughs> no way, it's important. Then, then, like, the mum is, like, uh, you know, she stays at home making the dinner, looking after the kids. Yep. Mm. And, uh, and you've got, like, the little kid who's just growing up, just messing about and stuff. So, what happens is, back then they didn't have, like, fresh flowing warm water every day. Mm. So all they could do, they could only afford to have, like, um... One one full big bath of fresh water, so they'd fill up the bath, right? And then the dad would come home and he'd say, "Oh, I've had a right, you know, I had a tough day at work and that down the pit." And uh, his wife would say, "It's all right, I'm putting the dinner on. You're gonna mm. have a nice warm bath." So because yeah. he because he gets the bath first because he, he gets the bath first because he's the grafter and right? he's covered in coal. He's covered yeah. in coal, so the water's like minging by the time he's finished. Yeah, right. And then the wife says, "Oh, after all my uh, cleaning the house and doing the cooking, I'm a bit sweaty now." She's covered in dust and yeah. grime. She has I'll, the next I'll, one. I'll have a bath, right? Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the line, there's a little baby. Yeah, yeah. He's been playing out all day. Also got like little uh, little grubby knees and stuff. Needs to have a bath. <coughs> yeah, it goes in the bath. Right? But because the water's so dirty... Sure. They go and empty the water out of the window, can't <laughs> see the baby in it. <laughs> Chucking the baby out with the bath water. That's how it, that's where it comes from. <laughs> I don't know what to say, Steve. Because <laughs> I've heard this, I just, I'm just, I'm just... <laughs> what do you think, Steve? Steve. So... <laughs> so firstly, that, that, that sort of, I mean... Oh. That doesn't explain why- Where do you why start? Well, You're that... struggling, aren't you? You're struggling where to start. Well, firstly, I can't see how we've now applied this to, I've you know, been the thinking example of this. I've, I've been thinking of this for days, Steve, waiting for you to I hear mean, this one. These coal mining parents did yeah. be negligent. Yeah. I, I love They've the left their baby because, in the bath, because unattended. It, that's the way around to do it. The one covered in coal- Yeah. Has you go bath. first. Sure. You go first. Don't wash the baby and then get in that. Yeah. You, you, one covered in coal goes first, yeah. that's the best idea. Yeah. Second most dirty one goes second, yeah. and then the clean little baby, yeah. I think, I think we should do him last, cause yeah. he's, he's done nothing well, towards no, this family. But, but more than that, Rick, leave him to his own devices. Yeah. Jack, I'm just gonna throw the water out. Yeah. In the bath. Don't check have you, first. Have you checked that the baby's done in there? No, I'm not Don't even gonna bother. waste my time You'd checking. See it. You'd see it. I'd be able to see You'd a baby. You'd see a baby if in a there. If a baby was in here, yeah. I'd be able to see it. I'm yeah. just gonna throw it out. Yeah, I'm not even gonna look, to be honest, Jack. Not We've all even had our bath. Yeah. If the baby's in there, yeah. then it should be, be making careful, itself Jack. Sick. We have lost three children this way. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Where did you read that? <laughs> New single. Supergrass, Grace on XFM 104.9. Coming up in the next hour, Carl Pimpleton's new game show. He's very excited about I'm this. I'm excited. I'm excited. We don't I know anything wait. about it, but, but it's he, gonna he's, be he's told me it's gonna be a winner. He's, you know, he said it's gonna go to television. Sure. Uh, I need some adverts, though. Oh, I'd love to hear some adverts. Can right? we have just two or three minutes of adverts, please? <laughs> please. <laughs> Vines there, Steve. On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Carl's getting very excited, as we all are, about his new- Should we- should we let him do a little taster for us? Well, I'm very excited about it. I mean- well, so, I, well, so, the gist of it, what is it? What is it, exactly? Right. Is it a game show or is it a competition? It's just, um, 
just thought it's something that, you know, you can play and also people at home, uh, can take part in it. Now, would they phone in about this or they can just play at home while they're listening? They can just play at home. Okay. Um. You mean we haven't got any prizes? No, there isn't. No, I, I think we, we could, we could get them to phone in, maybe. Well, I don't know. Let's hear the game idea yeah. first. Yeah. Right, it's, it's music related. Okay. Good. And, um, what I do is, I sort of, uh, tell a little story. Okay. And that story makes up a song title. All right. Well, it right. sounds ambitious. So, um. Is it a cryptic clue? Uh, could be. <laughs> uh, say, say like this, right? <laughs> oh, dearie me. <laughs> oh, dearie me. <laughs> say like this. Right. This, this woman, right, she's pregnant. You know the answer to this one, so don't be saying anything. This okay. is just aimed at Steve. Okay. Right. This woman has a baby. Yeah. She's pregnant, has a baby. And the doctor's there in the, uh, in the hospital going, oh yeah, you've got a, got a lovely little baby oh, here. you told me that this is, oh, this guy. Got a lovely little it. baby. Oh, um, it's just coming out now. You'll be able to see it in a minute. <laughs> and, uh, it's like covered in gunk and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, he's going, yeah, it's nearly here. It's coming out. I see, see it's a little head and that. And, um, he gets hold of it and it's full of all this gunk. Right. The baby's full of gunk. Yeah, like the Covered in gunk or full of gunk? Covered in it. Right. And he goes, uh, here you go, get hold of your baby, and he drops it. Right. What, what song's that? There's so much irrelevance there, Steve, I can't tell you. It's not a cryptic clue, it's not a cryptic clue. Cos only, uh, I mean, the gist of it is that, relevant. That isn't the best one. That's just- Right, I mean, there is just, there's, there's things there that you were tr tr dwelling on and thinking of pun, don't. Just go for gut instinct, what was it? What was that? Right, let me just, I just need to try and get the basics of this. There's a woman, she's pregnant, she has a baby. Yeah. The baby's covered in gunk. Yeah. Right. And because of the gunk, the doctor drops the baby. Yeah. And that's all I need to know. Yeah, that is all you need to know, yeah. The um, pregnancy is largely irrelevant. <laughs> okay, what it's, are the, what are the, the key elements? It's the birth and the doctor dropping it that the irrelevant, the, the, the irrelevant birth thing. and the dropping of the- Baby. Yeah. Uh, I've n I've absolutely no idea. I can't think even begin think to guess. Think about what's happened there. Oh, Carl, She's had a baby, the please. doctor's trying to deliver it, he's saying it's a nice little baby you've got here. This is all irrelevant. <laughs> this is all irrelevant. Right, let me tell you this. So, so, so just to be fair to Steve, so he gets, he can get into your mind, right? This is not a traditional cryptic clue. <laughs> okay. Logical problem or whatever. This is, this is Carl, what song am I thinking of, right? <laughs> right. That is Underworld, Born Slippy. <laughs> I have to say, actually, that makes textbook sense. Yeah. No, that does yeah. actually- No, do you I'm like sorry. The, do you like all the story about- <laughs> the, 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 It's alright, you can see it in a minute, it always just covered in gunk. Yeah. No, I agree there is some extraneous detail, yeah, but okay. I have to say- Yeah. That- Born was good, cause it was- th that's what- that's the look of it, was yeah. Born was good, yeah. And I Born Slippy- I- uh, No, I'm actually- I was quite impressed by that, Carl, I have to say. No, to be fair to you, I'm not just patronising you. Oh, well I've got- oh, um, wow. I actually think that was really good, and I- I, I disrespect Ricky Gervais for slagging okay, that off, cause okay. I actually think that that was quite well, good. Well, let's go ahead with it then. I- I- <laughs> On your I think we could we could maybe open this up to uh, to email correspondence or okay. Uh, or the let's phone go lines. for it then. Okay, this is Carl Pilkington's <laughs> new game show idea. It's what it's it's. Uh, it's just what's the song? <laughs> well, it, <laughs> Carl Pilkington presents what's the song, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Carl Pilkington. Right. Okay, well, what's right, the do song? Well, let's, I tell you what, let's play a record. Let's let's well, come back give after. Give out the number if ready for him. Well, uh, you should make a note of this. Uh, you can email us. The email's up and running. Ricky at xfm .co.uk, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Uh, what's the phone number, Carl? It's 08700 800 1234. Okay. 08700 800 1234. Make a note of that and we'll, uh, we'll have a game of, uh, what song is Carl thinking of after this next track? What do you want to play? What have um, you got lined up there? Oh, oh, continuing uh, again. I've, uh, uh, old fogies who were good once, and I won't Absolutely. hear a thing said against the new kids <laughs> out there. <laughs> yeah. It's not all new metal, is it? True enough. This is uh, Cat Stevens, uh, a, a little known album, Mona Bone Jack On, and this one's called Trouble. It's a lovely song. <laughs> Cat Stevens, Trouble from Mona Bone Jack On. Uh, on XFM 104.9, playing some new songs, playing some old songs. True enough, true enough. Playing some old games, some chit chat, some tears, some laughter, and true. Carl Pilkington with his brand new show, What's <laughs> the Song? What song am I thinking now, of? Now, I, I, I'm, I, I mean, you're nervous about this, aren't you, Rick? I am. You're worried. Well, because I've heard some of these clues before. And I they're, they're ramblings, they're sometimes they're close to ramblings <laughs> of a fool. 
<laughs> right. And it really is like those what am I thinking. Yeah. Um. I don't know though, I actually was genuinely impressed by Born Slippy. I, I, I have to give him the best. That's of the one of the better though. ones. Cause I, I, Cause that know. was short, sweet, and it worked. <laughs> Some of these, like, you say they're not gonna be quite as pissy. Some of them are like Emily Bronte novels. <laughs> um, now listen. We're just gonna go for it then. You do it and we'll just get people to call up. Cause I- I want- I wanna see the general public's confusion Absolutely. trying to work out a well, car- why don't we, uh, why don't we- why don't you give us your- your next clue <sighs> and then we'll play a track and then we'll- we'll hopefully have people on the line after the track right. to try and answer it and you can recap briefly. So give us your clue now for uh, what song am I thinking of. Right. This one, um, it's about a woman and um, she's just normal, nothing wrong with her or, <laughs> or so she thinks, right? <laughs> <laughs> but there's the twist. <laughs> Is this like the Tales of the Unexpected? And she's got like, you know, she's got her mates and she's having a normal life, having a good time and that. And then this thing happens, right? And uh, she starts to stink. <laughs> and she can't have a bath, right? <laughs> and she really wants to have a bath. She's dead sweaty and stuff. She's trying to, she's going about her daily stuff. She can do everything else normal. She can eat, she can talk, everything. But for some reason, she can't have a bath. Is there a coal mining husband in the bath? <laughs> yeah. Is this born stinky? <laughs> she can't have a bath. So a woman can't have a bath. Yeah. Is or that it? Or life. a shower. She can't. <laughs> okay, and leave it there, Rick. Don't try and guess. It's not okay. fast to guess. Um, the general public can phone up and ask questions. So I just just I'm go not for sure it. I they can. Can they? I think, I just think just so. Guess. Either way, we don't want just people just um, phoning well, up let's and getting it. Well, I'll tell you what. It. Why about this? Why they can ask one question? Yeah. They can ask one question of Carl. Then they have to make a guess. Okay. Oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two. Have we got someone on the line now? Well, we'll just go no, let's do it. Let's go for one. Let's go for one. This is edgy, edgy radio. This is letting Carl stuff. Right. Hello. Hello. Go on. Hello XFM. Hello, I'm ringing about um, what's the song? Absolutely. What do you think? Well, I'm going for Dirty Diana. Dirty Diana. See that works. That's a great guess. It does. Yeah, but it doesn't work because why can't she have a bath? <laughs> okay, so well, the answer that's is what in there. I was going to ask you. Well, well, that's your one question. That be the answer. That would be the answer, I'm afraid. What was your name? Shelley. Shelley, thanks very much. Shelley, I should, I should tell you that, you know, that you should never take this personally because no one can really get into the mind of Carl. So <laughs> don't, don't, you know, beat yourself up about this. I don't expect anyone to get these clues. No. So, um, so well done. That is guess. a fine guess. That's Thank you. Guess. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else then? That's, that's, uh, hello, XFM. Who's that on the line? Um, it's Chris. Hello, Chris. Uh, a question for Carl? Before um, you I give don't us have, a guess? Like, uh, I haven't thought of a really good question or anything yet. You just want to go for the guess? No, well, no, what I thought was, um, I'm sure Simon Mayo used to do this when he did a breakfast show <laughs> on Radio 1 years ago. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> so you've just <laughs> pinched this idea, idea Carl. You if you're going to rip story. someone off, Carl, do not rip off Simon Mayo. I haven't ripped this off. I thought this was a new idea. I was going to do it with sound effects instead, but that's yeah, a- Yeah, he a used to do that and he used to get his team to play other characters and- You story. idiot. Well, no, hang on. Not you, not you, Chris. I'm- yeah. I'm saying you idiot to Carl. Yeah, but nothing's new anyway, is it? So, <laughs> I'm not- I'm not- I'm not getting annoyed about it. <laughs> what do you think the answer is? <laughs> um, is it Cornflake Girl by Tori Amos? Good answer. She couldn't have a bath because she'd go all- She'd go and, and then go down the plug Good hole. answer. She'd so, go all soggy. Yeah. So, it's not, is it Cornflake Girl? No, it's not, but that's, that's a uh, great answer. It could have been. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're already seeing the error of this, aren't you? I think this like, is great radio. I'm I really hooked on this. I'm but genuinely this, excited. This now. is really like that. Um, uh, those uh, so-called lateral thinkers. A man got into a field and dies. Why? <laughs> yeah. Um, he ran out of air. No, <laughs> yeah. not the one I'm thinking he was of. Shot. Well, no. But, yeah, that was got a good answer. Well, but like Simon Mayo, like to you or something for doing it. Will you stop? Don't mention that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Listen, I think if you're going to steal ideas from someone, it should be a brain box like Mayo. <laughs> I mean, he's the man. The, the only example of one I can ever remember here on his show, because I was quite young then, was um, some people were pretending to like tap someone's phone or something, and then they got caught, and the answer was just bugging by whistle because they were genius. Uh, yeah. That was absolute genius. That's yeah. absolute yeah. genius. Chris, Chris, Carl, know, that's the sort of standard you've got, got to come up against. Yeah. Uh, thanks very much, Chris. No the phone lines are hot. Hello, oh, XFM. <laughs> Hi, is it Candy Perfume Girl? Is it what? Candy Perfume Girl. Candy Perfume Girl? Yeah. Ca candy Perfume Girl. Is it- well, who's that by? Madonna. No, it's- That sounds like an obscure album track. No, it's, it's one of their- one of her songs. Just that think is about it. it. She- she stinks and everything. She's- a normal life. She's- I didn't say she was a sweet or anything. Um, <laughs> but she, for some reason she can't have a bath or is a shower. Is this a big song, just to give him a clue? Is it's this- a, It's a bigger song than, uh, Candy Sweet Girl. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed for your guess. It clearly is <laughs> Thank you. It Cheers. Was, Sorry. A, it w you know, we'll okay. Play, we'll one more, then we're going yeah. to a record. Come oh, on. Okay. Go on. Hello, XFM. Carl. Yeah. Is it High and Dry by Radiohead? 
High and dry. High and dry. Now that's great. She smells, which is another word for high. She's dry because she doesn't have a shower. Carl, if it isn't that, <laughs> yours will never be as good as that. He's the winner. <laughs> Whatever you're thinking of, that clue is brilliant. What's your name, mate? It's Richie. Richard, uh, uh, I mean, you can't beat that. That's a bit too lateral. Don't be stupid. <laughs> it's perfect. He's made yours into a clever clue. He's made- High, she smells. Dry, she never gets in the bath or shower. It's yeah. not that, is it, Carl? No, it's you not. You don't even get that, do you? Not have really. You ever, <laughs> have you ever heard of the word high being used to mean sort of smelly? No. No, no. Oh, what? That, that was where you went wrong there, mate. <laughs> Richard, um, well, I'm declaring you the winner, even though that isn't the answer. I don't think Thank we you. should give up this earlier. Can we it? just- can, what? Let's play a song. And, let's and play a song. Give it, give it one more chance, cos yeah. if people think about it, it is really easy. So, I'm not gonna find out the answer, though, cos I've gotta go out. <laughs> okay, we, we'll do it very quickly. Stay in for ten minutes. We're just gonna play a new, uh, okay. Coldplay track, out. Okay, let's do Coldplay and then Cheers. we'll come out with this. Bye. Coldplay. One I love. That's for, um, Nick. Neil, Olivia in uh, Tower Bridge. Absolutely, and also Nikki from Bromley who emailed in, she's enjoying the show and she, uh, she wanted a bit of Coldplay. That's the B-side of the current single. This is a great place. show, isn't it? We've got great music, we've great got music. laughs, tears, we've got requests, we've got Simon Mayo games. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. a bit, it's just, it's just like Radio 1 for <laughs> less <laughs> people. <laughs> exactly. Radio 1 for less people. Yeah. <laughs> this is great, isn't it? Um, so, so, go on, so listen, Kai, you were so excited about this game, weren't you, earlier? You, ca you came in with a but hop, skip, and a leap in your, in your step. Although, I must say, the phones are going mental. We're gonna have to take this some more it, calls. No, people I mean, call. high and dry is great. I mean, it works. That's Let's it. Have a, can we have a very quick- Just uh, a recap in case someone's yeah, just- Yeah, a very quick Can recap. you make it- can you make it so- High and Dry doesn't work now. Give us a bit of information that makes it different to High and Dry, or can't you So for those that have just that? tuned in, Carl describes, in a roundabout way, a story which somehow is representative of a song. Is a that A song right? title. A song title, yeah. okay. So, um, this woman, she's, she's, she's alright, you know, she has a normal life. <laughs> Pretty much. Kind of. Yep. Um, there's probably a few things actually that she can't do thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the main problem would be having a, <laughs> having a wash or having a bath or having a shower. Yeah. Maybe going for a swim, thinking about it. <laughs> Right. Oh. Let's, let's I think water is the clue, isn't it? That's the clue. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so fair uh, Who's that on the line? Hi there, it's Mark. Hello, Mark. Hi, Mark. Right, what do you think? It smells like Teen Spirit, Nirvana. No, it's not. That's a great guess. Smells like Teen Spirit again. He's also no. brilliant. Thank you, Mark. Well no, done. No, it's not that. Alright. Hello, XFM. Oh, that's, that's, oh. that's a dodgy mobile. Oh, that's a bit of a clue. A dodgy Hello, mobile. XFM. Oh, oh, they've just given up. They, they've all been going for Smells Like Teen Spirit. Yeah. They just hung up. Hello, XFM. Uh, hi. Is it, um, She's Electric? Excellent. She's electric, it makes sense. That's uh, fantastic, Oh, Carl. she's electric. Why does she smell? Cos she doesn't have a bath and that. Cos she can't have a bath or a shower. What's- what's your name? Neil. Neil so got does it. that- so- Oh. Neil got God. it, so- Did you get it straight away? Uh, no, only, uh, during the song. A process of elimination from all the other wrong answers. Yeah, basically. So- She's electric. Rick, I have to say, you, you're holding your head in hand, in oh. your hands and it looks like you want to shoot off, but I have to say, I thought that was quite good. I genuinely thought that was quite good. But it's not a cryptic clue, is it? Cos it's not all, she smells, there's a few things you can't do, she's electric. Yeah, but do you understand what, what I'm getting at? <laughs> she's electric. She's I always understand what you're getting at, Carl. That's never been a problem in the, you know, the years I've known you. Neil got it. Yeah. She's I electric. have to say, Rick, I think you're down on this idea. I could definitely see that. ITV1, replacing Get- I'm um, a celebrity, get me out of here. Carl Pilkington hosting. Simon Mayo, yeah. on the phone. <laughs> exactly. To the lawyers. <laughs> well, uh, well Neil, there's no prizes or anything, but well done. Uh, well done, that was well worth it. Right. Well, you go away with the award in the knowledge that you've beaten Carl. Yeah. You can get- uh, secure the knowledge that you thought <laughs> how Carl does. <laughs> Absolutely. Well done, Neil. Okay. I have to say, I, I think you're being harsh on him. I think that's, okay. a, that's a great game. Alright, let's do it again next week then. I thought that was a great game. Yeah. Brilliant. Play well, record. Come. Play record. Uh, uh, what do you want to play? Oh, you know, I tell you, uh, we've been playing some oldies, Rick, and I've enjoyed them all, but I think I've been in love with this song for many- Strange and beautiful. Aqualung. Or as Carl says, Aqualung. On XFM 104.9. Well, it seems that Carl's clue, um, you know, did go down quite well. Some other people got it. Uh, the game show as a whole has been well received. Well, I have to say, the, uh, the email, you know, we've had, we've had loads of emails, Rick. Yeah. You know, I mean, we've had, uh, let me just count two. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and, uh, one of them was aimed at, uh, Simon Mayo. <laughs> yeah, came to us by mistake. Uh, they yeah, thought they were listening to Mayo. Yeah. And the yeah. other is, uh, saying Carly Except enough that they got the game show. Radio One with less people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. and, uh, so despite the fact it was a stolen idea, I think we yeah. can do it again next week. Just and like next week, let's, let's rustle up some prizes as well. You're just like your little magpie, aren't you? Thieving shiny <laughs> ideas. <laughs> From Mayo's Nest. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so anyway, we played Leonard Skinner just before the ads, and I was just looking at the compilation it comes from. It's a great compilation. We took this from, uh, Driving Rock. Yeah. Uh, which I imagine- This is not available in the shops. <laughs> exactly. Um, I imagine it's come straight from the personal collection of, uh, maybe Tarrant or, uh, Foxy. Or Canfield. But there's some great names on here that I'd like to see. Maybe we could He's play them. He's a little them. Vance, isn't he? He's a <laughs> tiny Vance. Exactly. You know what you're a little Mayo? Canfield's a little Vance. I mean, these are some names. Just Go don't- on. I haven't heard them for a long time. Go I'd on. love to hear them again. Go Alana on. Miles. Mm. Black Velvet. No, rubbish. Rhea. You don't hear Rhea, no? Chris, Chris Rhea. Rhea. Yeah. Well, what one? Spin Doctors. Oh, God. Lest we forget the Spin Doctors. God. Crash Test Dummies. Mm. What happened mm. to them? Don't know. Uh, who else we got on here? Richard Marks. Yeah. Mr. Big. I didn't- he's guilty in that song when he goes, I swear I did, and all that, and the police came around, well there's no smoke without fire, I reckon he did it. To be honest. <laughs> I yeah. reckon he- I reckon he murdered her. You're absolutely right. Go on. Legs, ZZ Top. <laughs> <laughs> she knows how to use them. <laughs> she does indeed. She knows how to- it's what it is, it's electrical impulse from the brain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, what, how is she using them? What's she's she just- she's just, um, it's, you know. The brothers do beer on her as well. Oh, isn't that- there's nothing wrong with them. No, absolutely not. Starship. Yeah. And, uh, Toto as well. Oh, what I forgot. Really it's not actually. What is it? Can you name another Toto track? Hold the line. It's Hold the Line. Let's hold rock. It. Put that on. <laughs> it's a good, it's a good stuff. Down. Ow. Is it good stuff? When session musicians get together. <laughs> Oh, we Can got we hear a quick little blast? Oh, it should be. On. Is that is that disc oh, still? Oh, play in a little bit. Hold the line. It's that great. Should be, uh, that should be DJs. Okay. Um. Oh, what what? Can we have? There's some great ideas out there. I'm sure. I, I mean, if you if you want to like any fix, it's done. <laughs> if you may want to eat a yeah. packed lunch on a roller coaster. <laughs> on a roller coaster, yeah, with some or, boy scouts. Uh, or 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 dance with banana rama. Yeah. Then then yeah. we're we're yeah. We're, yeah. Uh, or five star. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love the fact five star <laughs> reform. There's three of them. <laughs> <laughs> have you read about this? Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh. Turn left. White Stripes on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant Hello. and Carl Pilkington. Well, I had a good time. I've enjoyed it, yeah, it's been nice. It's some, been fun. Some good tracks, some, some laughs, a new, uh, competition by yeah. Simon Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh, <laughs> Absolutely. That was great. Yeah, yeah. Carl, have you heard, um, the big news? That, uh, Ricky Gervais is, uh, looking to take up, um, well, you explain it, Gervais, because oh, I'm not- Oh, it's not big not, news. No, I, What are you talking- what do you mean? You, 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 you want- you're taking up boxing, is this right? N no. What is uh, the story? You want to be right. fighting for money? No! What is <laughs> that? <laughs> yeah, bare knuckle fighting. No, come on, what is it? No, all, all it is, I've been watching this, um, show on cable called Born to Fight, and it's sort of, sort of right. late. <laughs> it's a late one. We flick around, and, and I think it's, uh, on the After Roadies. Which is like- Roadies? A, yeah, it's a bloke, one bloke with a camera to goes on tour with different people, like, he went on with Motorhead, he went with, uh, with a Meatloaf, um, uh, uh, tribute act, <laughs> he went on with Coldplay, was in one of them, it's that, and it's the is sort of- Is this when, like, all the other channels have been switched off? Yeah, this yeah, is the only yeah, one yeah exactly, yeah. And there's one, uh, called Born to Fight, and, uh, they just, uh, take a different story, it might be, like, an amateur fight, or it might be, um, an unlicensed fight, not illegal, yeah. um, or it might be White Collar, which I'm thinking of doing. What's, what's White Collar? White Collar is just people who want to fight. And, uh, it's organised. Is it like a charity club? Yeah, it's just, but it's charity. It, it's safe. It's, it's, it's a charity do. You know, having like, big events. And it's just two people that, you know, aren't boxers, aren't amateur boxers. And they get in the ring and they do three, three, um, two minute rounds. And they just lay into each other. They've got head guards on. And, uh, Rick, I don't mean to alarm you, but, um, you know, we work together, obviously, and, and we make the office and stuff. Your face is my fortune. <laughs> I can't that, have that it. That must being, be a bit of a worry for it you. It is. I'm not gonna say, well, your heart as well is also a concern. Yeah. You know, and you're eating and stuff. But so when I said well, I was, no, was, no, was, was, was gonna get fit, you were going, no, Gervais, you're only funny because you're fat. No, I agree, this is true, but I'm saying there's a degree, there's a difference between being fit. Yeah. And, um, and I would say, get for instance, face don't eat, in. well, don't eat, um, don't eat kind of, you know, uh, cheese and bacon, you know, <laughs> on their own. <laughs> all day. All day. Oh, right. for breakfast. So what I'm saying is there's yeah. a difference between, you know, exercising and then having your face beaten in. And what I'm saying is that you, it, I just don't think it's a good idea. But I might win. 
No, the pro- well, I don't- you, it, that's- that's- that's irrelevant. You're still gonna get- take a couple of blows to the face. And the point is this, Rick, you're not gonna win. Why? Because- no, because you are delusional. You think that you are probably the world's greatest boxer. <laughs> you are, I know- ever since I've known you, you seem to think that that's the case, because you've watched all the Rocky films. <laughs> And you think that's fair enough? That seems straightforward enough. <laughs> but look at your physique. You know, yeah, you've got some upper body strength, but yeah. you know, you've also got some upper, some <laughs> lower belly strength as well. I noticed. And um, <laughs> and my concern is, you're going to go in there, and you're not only going to be a broken man when you realise that you're just not as handy in the ring as you thought you were. Yeah. But also, you're going to you're going to incur some injuries. This you is wear fighting masks. talk. This is fighting talk. The first this rule of fight club is don't this, talk about fight club. This ones we want to do it more now, just because of you. It was the same when Adrian didn't agree that Rocky could beat. Right. Clubber yeah. Lang. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she- she made that mistake, then she made the same mistake at with- what with age, Drago. Rick? At what age? She turns up at the end to take a bit of the credit, didn't she? When you were this kind of thin, nimble youth, in yeah. your makeup and your eyeliner and all the rest of yeah. it, you- I bet you had no idea- you had no thoughts about boxing. It never came into your mind, did it? So at what age did you suddenly think, wait a minute, I've taken the wrong path in life. I could've been the world <laughs> I heavyweight. Don't, I don't think I could. When you- when have you suddenly decided that you can- you- you can suddenly be a bit street tough? I don't understand why this has suddenly come about in- Well, I'm not in pulling out life. a shout, am I, to fight people? It's not- I've not- it's not like Noel but Gallagher you've got to find and Robbie some, Williams. But you've got to find someone else, presumably, to fight with. Yeah, but it'd probably be a businessman who wants a fight. Right. You know, there's something really weird about that. Don't you think that sound- if you just listen to yourself, I want to fight another bi- I want to fight a businessman. <laughs> no, Please may I fight a businessman. I don't want to fight a businessman. <laughs> you just I said. Want, <laughs> I want to fight someone who wants to- it's, you know, I mean, it's not- I want to fight them, though. <laughs> I want to fight somebody. <laughs> Since you were like, it sounds a bit mad, Bring yeah. them on, I want to fight people. No, but it's more the- it's more the effort and the training, the commitment to it, like climbing a mountain. I mean, I think climbing a mountain and doing a marathon is ridiculously macho. It's not the fact that you can no, do it No, that's not go, macho compared well, to boxing. macho, isn't it? Climbing, there's no reason to climb a mountain, there's no reason to do a marathon. If you can run a mile, that's all you need. The fact that you train is to whether you can do it yourself and achieve something. And this is more <coughs> like the training and the learning uh, skill and then seeing if it works. I, I don't want to get in there to- But I aren't you concerned about you might get beaten? Or you might get beaten up, I should say. No! What's the worst that can happen? I, it was You'll get black eyes, bruises and you- Well, bruises- bruises <laughs> heal. Mate, let me just remind you of the what? time we were working in your flat, <laughs> right? <laughs> and you immediately- <laughs> Right, I think- I don't know to this day what happened, but you started choking, you clasped your chest, you were breathing, wheezing, right, I leapt over to you, I remember screaming, I don't know the Heimlich manoeuvre, yeah. if you've swallowed something I can't help, yeah. you gained your breath, you gained your composure, yeah, I said, yeah. what happened, did you eat something, did you go down the wrong way? You said, no, I swallowed some dust. I swallowed some dust. You breathed some dust in, that was in the air, there was some dust in the air, you breathed that in, it knocked you out for two days. Rick, you're in bed for two yeah. days. I love that. I don't I, think you- I don't I think you're the man for the job. And that's some dust. What do you think this businessman's gonna do? Exactly. He'll be permanent. Hide your appointment. Yeah. He'll hurt your appointment. You found a lump, didn't you, on your testicle once? We sat <laughs> in a uh, doctor's waiting room, I remember, for about 45 you got, minutes. You got- I haven't checked out, it was fine. I think I went twice, didn't my I? Point, yeah, I point. said to the doctor at one point, I said, did you check round the back? Yeah. I was thinking he hadn't checked it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dear. My, just because I hadn't found anything. My point is this. Oh. You're something of hypochondriac. You know <laughs> you're something of hypochondriac. <laughs> you know that already. So. <laughs> Uh, why do you think this is going to be any different? Wow. If you take a- when you take the first blow to the head, you take the punch, you'll immediately think that you've got some kind of, you know, brain disorder. No, I've always- and you'll be I've done always for, wanted to do it, but I just up. thought- I just talent. thought I wanted to make sure, I wanted to know that I definitely lost my looks. Right. And, um, I've seen some of the publicity shots, I've got mirrors and mouths, so now- because I've definitely lost my looks now, I've got nothing to lose. Yeah. So I want, you know, maybe a younger, more handsome man, I want to teach him a <laughs> lesson. <laughs> Let me just- I'll end with this. <laughs> right. For people who listen to this show regularly, <laughs> yeah. you already sound like you're punch drunk. <laughs> All right, and that's just your natural way of talking. Please, let's not do the real thing. <laughs> oh, play a record. Oh, I mean, is it going to be televised? Uh, it, well, we could get it on DVD, maybe release All right, it. Now I'm interested. Okay, <laughs> is there money to be made? Yeah, lots of oh, money. Well, maybe we should talk about it. Okay. On XFM 104.9. You join us now live at uh, Shippey Old People's Home, <laughs> where uh, TV star Ricky Gervais <laughs> is taking on his first uh, non professional bout. Yeah. Um, Ricky, who are you fighting this evening? Uh, a bloke called Pete Smedley. <laughs> okay, Pete Smedley. How old is Pete? He's 72. 72 years yeah, old. Yeah. yeah and yeah, uh, yeah, now you're very excited about the fight, I know. Yeah, he's, yeah, uh, yeah, Pete's yeah, just yeah. recovered from a massive coronary, hasn't he? Well, I don't want to get into that. He, he's <laughs> deemed himself fit, and okay. uh, that's, that's good enough for me. <laughs> if, he, if he wants to fight. Listen, right, someone just called up and said, 
uh, they're fight me. He sounded this is such pretty, a bad idea. pretty tasty. I said, how, how tall are you? He said, five foot eleven. I said, what do you weigh? He said, thirteen stone. I said, how old are you? Twenty-seven. Mm. I explained to him I'm looking for someone a lot older and smaller. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A lot, lot older and smaller than Donna Stell. <laughs> If Don yeah. Stell from, uh, <coughs> what's it? <laughs> it I'm, gonna, I'm business, gonna show you now, Steve. This is not, yeah. it's just a sport. You know, mm. people go, oh, don't go into badminton, the shuttlecock can hurt your eye. <laughs> it's just a sport. Okay, fair enough. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll I'm sure resume this conversation next week. Yeah. When, of course, we'll also be playing more of, uh, Carl's new brilliant game with prizes, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Simon Mayo's What <laughs> Is Carl Thinking? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I I'll leave you with a song for, uh, the ladies, Rick, if I may. Yeah. Uh, this is by, uh, my friend, uh, Harry, you may know, he sends me, tr uh, tracks every so often that I yeah. should listen to, and uh, this is a particular favourite of mine. Pretty please, it's by Kevin Tahista's Red Terror. I don't know if I've pronounced that right. But enjoy that and we'll uh, see you next week. Let's